I'd be glad to. The Danport School establishes the following priorities to ensure the academic success of all students. To provide leadership and direction to improve the overall learning environment in our classrooms, schools, and district, including the health, safety, and security and happiness of students and staff. And to direct and support actions, programs, and activities which reduce the impacts of poverty on our students, their families, and our community. Thank you. And Director Snyder, would you please read our mission and vision statements? Absolutely. Our mission statement reads, to enhance each student's abilities by providing a quality education enriched by our diverse community. And our vision statement reads, education that challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and the community to answer the question, what if? Thank you very much. We'll move on to our showcase, Superintendent Tate. Thank you, Mr. President. Principal Mike Lawler from Walcott K through 8. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, thank you for having us. Uh, Walcott is a K-8 building, and the Student Council, which is an intermediate group in our building, does a remarkable job of planning a number of activities to involve our students with each other as well as with the community. And I'm going to let two students, uh, Izzy Castell and Michaela Sperry, share that with you and a slideshow and uh, they told me tonight I said you have your flash drive they said oh no it's on Google Apps and I was so proud of them because we work hard at that but I think you'll enjoy this show and hearing from them so we have created a slideshow to help show all the different things that we've done throughout our school this year that has really impacted us so um, for September our goal for the month was health. So we've done lots of different things we've done throughout the month. We've had days where we bring healthy snacks for AP and our AP classes have taken walks throughout the school. Um, October was the month of respect and um, we did unity, unity Day, so we wore orange. And um, we also did a pumpkin decorating contest. So like all the APs did um, a pumpkin and we decorated them. <laughs> For the month of November, we focused on gratitude. We were helping give back to our community, so we donated to our local food drive. And throughout our school, we collected lots of cans and non-perishable foods, which was a really awesome thing that we did at school. Um, December was the month of compassion, and we did um, cozy Christmas, so we collected money for um, kids who needed presents in, in our community. and. We did um, a staff and parent coffee house, and we served the staff coffee in the morning. For January, we focused on courage, and we, well, one of the main things we did was we had, had, we had red t-shirts for sale for the American Heart Association, which helped support people um, that have heart defects, which helped raise money for them, which was a, an extremely good cause that we did. Um, February, February was the month of kindness, and we did, um, um, students bought, like, little um, pieces of paper, and we um, sent them to kids um, for money, and then we also did pennies for patients. Yeah. For March, our goal was preparedness. We had done lots of research on colleges to help us prepare for that, and we were able to decorate our door and, like, almost have a competition between different classrooms to look at all the different colleges that were available and lots of them show just different information from each college that we got to be able to learn about that. April was a month of, month of responsibility and um, we looked up long and short term goals for our life and we did IO assessments. For the month of May we worked on perseverance. Lots of us Today we had field day at our school, so we all tried our best, and we just had a fun day where we got to do activities outside and inside. And we also are going to have our sixth through eighth grade honors ceremony to show how our grades and academics have affected us. And so we get rewarded for having our good grades.
Are you ready for questions before you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Aren't just walk off, are you? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments by the board? Director Hayes. You guys did a great job. There were some things that you jumped over pretty quickly, though, and I'm wondering if you can quickly explain those to me. Your pennies for patients, your strongman assembly, and I'm interested in your food baskets. How did you select who got those baskets, and how many of them did you provide? Do you remember? There were five families, and we spoke to um, members in the community, and we spoke to our school nurse who knew of people that could um, accept those food baskets. We called the family ahead of time to see if they'd be willing to accept it, and they were. So once the money was collected, um, we put together a turkey and all of the rest of the traditional stuff and then delivered it to their homes or they could come pick it up. Thank Do you, you want to talk about pennies for patients? Pennies for patients, what we had done is throughout our AP classes, we had each given, sorry, we had given each of our classes a box to do, and throughout the weeks, we would donate money to collect for, we would collect money for patients who have cancer, so we're trying to do help donate money for them if they can't always afford lots of their treatments. So we're trying to help donate back to the community for people who are in need for that. And actually our strongman um, assembly fell through last minute, so we weren't able to do that. No. Well, those were all great causes that you did, and I thank you for being so diligent to work towards helping people that really are not able to help themselves. Director DeSalvo. So this is the student council that did all this, right? And how do you get the rest of the school involved? Um, lots of the time we do it over announcements. Every morning we say the Pledge of Allegiance, and we also do daily announcements, which helps inform the whole school about things that are going on. And we also make posters that we hang throughout the school to help show um, lots of, it helps inform the students of what's going on throughout the weeks. Good. Well, keep up the great work. You're doing really good things. And pass it on. Are you guys going on to high school now? No. All right. Make sure those behind you follow in your footsteps. So great job. Director Snyder. Real quick, each one of you, um, tell us your name and how you got involved in student council and surprisingly or something that surprised you that you got out of it more than... Uh, than what you would have had you not been in student council. Um, my name is Michaela Sperry, and I wanted to join student council because I always thought that it would be so cool, like join something and like do something good for the community. And honestly, I got out of like a lot of leadership and wanted to actually do something for the community instead of just like standing there and just wanting to do something. But we actually did something. My name is Izzy Castell. I had joined student council because I wanted to learn, like, I wanted to help learn how to give back to the community and how to help throughout the school. And one of the things that I've taken away from that is I've learned a lot more how to help give back to people with pennies for patients. And we've done Cozy Christmas, which helps provide presents. And I've just learned how better, more different ways to give back to our community. Thank you, ladies, very much. You should be very proud of yourselves. Um, I don't know if you really thought of yourselves as leaders in your school, but absolutely you are. And there's going to be a lot of kids uh, that do better in school and get into the things that they didn't know if they would like because of the work you guys did. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Director Mayfield. Well, first, congratulations for the great presentation that you just did. What I'm curious about, what do you feel was your biggest challenge uh, coming into junior high, and of course you have succeeded because now you're getting ready to go to high school. But what do you think your biggest challenge was, and as well, what was the most fun you think you ever had in those three years that you were there? Um, my, probably the hardest thing was probably like getting used to the like school day and um, like getting through stuff and like planning out what I had to do for the whole day because I joined a lot of stuff this year, so I had to like, plan out what it, I had to do. And probably the most fun is probably student council, council, because you get to do stuff and help the community. Good. Um, 
I what I liked most prob or the thing that I was most worried about was how many like people who were coming and I've become really close with so many different people in this school so I really enjoyed that and one of the things I probably enjoyed the most was lots of like the dances that we do in like activity days where you just get to hang out with people and do enjoy yourself and it's almost like a day where you kind of relax but you get to do so many activities and it's so much fun to do with everybody all your friends well amazing uh, you know, one of the things I think, just being involved, there were so many things that you've probably learned that you didn't expect, things that you've seen, things that you were able to do. So I congratulate you for getting out of that box and trying new things and things that ordinarily you would not be doing. So great job. Anybody else? Director Quill. Yeah, I, th I thought it was interesting. You presented your monthly focus items that you had, and, and I was thinking of church, and I was thinking about how people sometimes go to church on Sundays and they, they live like heathens the rest of the week, you know, six days heathen and one day, you know, for God. Um, and I was just wondering how well you were able to um, help kids understand that perseverance isn't just for one month and kindness the next, but that this is supposed to be part of our lives all the time. Were you, do you think you were successful in that? Yes. <laughs> I think a lot of kids, um, actually, we I, when we did this stuff, they actually wanted to do something for the community now because we like gave them an example so they could go out and do something for the community. Right, right. And hopefully that they'll carry that on into their, their lives outside of school as well. Great. You know, it's, uh, it's, it is a leadership issue. I think, like Director Mayfield said, it's, um, it's also a modeling thing that you model for other students what kind of good behavior it is that, that creates good citizens, and you certainly are on the path to being great citizens of our city and hopefully state for the rest of your lives. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, and it was Izzy, is that right? Okay. I've got that I Z Z Y. Yeah, that's we have another Izzy right here. That's great. But Izzy and Michaela, uh, thank you very much, and and thank you, teachers and principal for leadership, and and parents if you're out there. A uh, couple of great students here. So, thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to recognitions. And the first part of the recognitions, um, I think, will be presented by Johanna. Is that correct, Superintendent yes. Tate? OK. So Johanna Smith will be here. Um, I think why don't you go ahead and get started. Okay, very good. Good evening and welcome. Thanks to the Downport School Board for this opportunity. I am Johanna Smith, the Development Director for the Downport Schools Foundation. Since 1987, the mission of DSF has been to provide resources to enhance the educational opportunities and experiences available students <coughs> in the Downport Community Schools. <coughs> this mission is best displayed through our outstanding scholarship program and our Great Minds program, which funds both mini grants for individual classrooms and also district-wide programming in partnership with the school district curriculum department. Through Great Minds, every student K through eight is given the opportunity to attend unique curriculum-driven experiential learning field trips to places like the Ballet, Symphony, Figgy Art Museum, RME, Nyabi Zoo, and other community resources to truly enrich their learning experiences. This effort is coordinated by Jennifer Wyneth, and it proves with its uniqueness that yet again we are truly a district of distinction. Our 15-member board is, is represented here tonight by our president, John Korn, and also Manny Fritz. <laughs> Along with these dedicated volunteers, Jennifer and I serve as ambassadors for the school district through Great Minds projects, civic events, and media relations. We enjoy a positive working relationship with all the key administrators here at the ASC and in the individual buildings. 
We especially recognize Superintendent Dr. Art Tate and the District Liaison, Rachel Steiner. Thank you all for supporting this mutually beneficial enterprise. Tonight, we are celebrating the graduating class of 2016. This class has been awarded a record $80,500 in scholarships from the Davenport Schools Foundation. There were 44 awards given, covering 25 scholarships. Tonight, I have the honor of introducing several of these young men and women to you, as well as their parents who accompanied them tonight. In addition, the foundation will write an additional $17,250 in checks for winners of multi-year scholarships from the past three years. This brings our grand total to be awarded this year to $97,750 in scholarships. Before I introduce the winners, I want to acknowledge our scholarship co-chairs, Manny Fritz, who is here with us tonight, and Sherry Fries for all their work in selecting the winners, as well as the members of the Foundation Selection Committee, which included Barb Riley, Teresa Harris, Tom Kettleson, Marilyn Peters, and Craig Van Cook. I would also like to commend and thank the numerous retirees, graduates, and teachers throughout the district that help with the, the special selection scholarships. And I must offer a special salute to our donors who create and add to the scholarship funds each year. They play a quiet but very significant role in the process. We truly appreciate their vision and generosity. Finally, thank you to Midwest, Midwest One Bank, who stepped up again sponsoring two $500 scholarships. Damon Colvin, branch manager, is here tonight representing the bank. Thank you, Damon. Soon, our winners will go through a milestone graduation at the iWireless Center. It will be a big day for them and their families. We wish them all the best as they continue their education and training. Um, I ask that you please hold your applause until all are introduced. And at the end, um, students, we're going to take a photograph with the board in the front of the room, so please don't run out. Um, I would ask at this time that all the scholarship recipients please make your way up to the front, and I'm going to ask that you stand over here so that when your name is called, I'm going to have you make a, um, a line across here. So if you could all, anyone who's here tonight, please come on up. And parents, when your son and or daughter's name is called, please just stand so we can recognize you at the same time. You'll kind of make a little, like a bob, and then we'll scoot all the way down. Yeah, there's 36 of you. Perfect. Tonight, I have the privilege to introduce a new scholarship we presented for the first time, the Jan Mutum Educator Opportunity Scholarship. The Jan Mutum Educator Opportunity Scholarship is for a West High graduating senior entering college as an education major. It was established in 2015 with a $100,000 gift by the Mutum family to honor their mother. After an accident claimed her husband, Jan Mutum was left to raise their young children. She instilled in them the value of family, service to others, and education. All attended West High, continued with post-secondary education, and are now making a difference in their respective areas of influence. This is a four-year renewable scholarship. It's worth $10,000. The student receives $2,500 every year. And it's awarded to a student who is passionate about becoming a teacher and will inspire a love of learning in the next generation. And here to present or announce this award tonight is John Mutum, an educator at Eisenhower, and his mother, Jan. We just appreciate the opportunity to uh, impact the future generations through inspiring educators and giving them the opportunity to pursue their career. Uh, we'd like to announce that the first recipient of the Jan Mutum uh, Educator Opportunity Scholarship is Colin Bell.
Unfortunately, Colin could not be here this evening. Um, he is also the recipient of the Jack King Music Scholarship, a $1,500 scholarship. He's the son of Kim Bell of Davenport, and he plans to attend Iowa State. Next to present is Judy Hammond, and she will present the Class of 1959 scholarship. Good evening. I'm very proud uh, to have Gabe Barrett as our scholarship winner this year. His academic record and extracurricular activities are outstanding, and I'm sure he will do a great job becoming a mechanical engineer and an Imagineer with Disney World. I, I have no doubt <laughs> in my mind. Gabe is our 27th recipient of our class scholarship, and with this year's award, we will have given $23,000 in scholarships. Thank you, Gabe. Gabe's parents are John and Ann Barrett of Davenport. Are they here? There we go. Thank you. And he plans to attend the University of Iowa. Uh, next will be Tom Kettleson to present the Central Class of 64 Future Educator Scholarship. Hi, folks. My name is Tom Kettleson, and, and I'm a proud graduate of Davenport Central High School in 1964. <laughs> two, two years ago, we had our 50th class reunion, and as, as part of that, we uh, challenged our 675 classmates to donate some money towards a scholarship fund. We were able to generate a little bit under $31,000 for that scholarship fund. And tonight, I'm gonna to present our second scholarship to Benjamin Grenier. Benjamin, I didn't mention you Congratulations. Good luck in college. Thank you. Um, Benjamin was also awarded the uh, Central Hall of Honor Scholarship Keith Jurgens Memorial Award. His parents are Don and Heather Greiner got him, of Davenport, and he'll be a student at Rockford University. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is Cynthia Herring to present the Carol Herring Memorial Scholarship. Good evening, uh, and I, it's a pleasure to be here. I am the oldest daughter of Carol Herring, who was a teacher for 40 years, including uh, over 30 in, in Davenport, at, uh, mostly at Eisenhower Elementary. It's a pleasure to be here from Florida. I come up for three, four days a year, specifically for this night. We live in Wikiwachi, Florida, so uh, Orlando, is that where you're gonna be with Disney? So? Anyway, I was looking, uh, my mother had won a Golden Apple Award, and uh, the news article from that time said that she believed one single teacher can make a positive difference in a child's life, and that her hope was for some of the students in her room for that, to, that she could be that teacher. And she said, this is a quote from a local paper, they don't have to be pretty or smart or always be perfect for me to like them. They're mine for a year and I enjoy them. She called them her cherubs. So when we announce these uh, winners, it's with great pleasure uh, that we not only support them as students who are successful in school at this time, but also as future teachers. Uh, first uh, Carol Herring Memorial Scholarship winner is Anna Black from Davenport North. Is Anna here? Her parents are Mike and Lori Black of Bettendorf, and she'll attend Blackhawk College. Another winner is Jonathan Shaw. His parents are Daniel and Christina Shaw of Bluegrass, and he will attend the University of Northern Iowa. Finally, we have Andrea Fig from Davenport North. I, are these, any of these students here? Not tonight? Okay, so we wish them well. And uh, we wish all of the individuals who applied for the scholarship well. And uh, we're behind you 100%, so keep up the good work.
The last student, Andrea Fig, was also the recipient of the Mary Means Memorial Scholarship for $2,000. Her parents are Dean and Lynn Fig of Wilton, and she plans to study at Scott Community College. All right, Emily Tan. Nope. All right, Emily Tan of Central High won the Catherine Bell Tate Scholarship. It's 14000 over four years. She was also the recipient of a Hall of Honor Scholarship for 1500 her parents are Anthony and Julie Tan of Davenport, and she will attend Iowa State University. Kate Axel? Awesome. <laughs> Kate Axel won the Jane Grady Scholarship for 5000 over four years. She was also awarded the Helen Poling Scholarship for 1200 and a Hall of Honor Scholarship. Her parents are John and Elizabeth Axel of Davenport. And she, sorry, she will attend, um, she will be a student at the University of Pennsylvania. No, no, oh. All right, Santa Clara University, you heard it first here. <laughs> Margaret Carr. Yes. <laughs> Margaret Carr won our Hanai Fujiwara Weiss Memorial Scholarship for Music. It's 4,000 over four years, and her parents are William and Mia Carr of Davenport. And she'll be a student at CSU, Colorado State. Oh, boy. Nicholas Ferenkrug. Yes, I said it right. Nicholas was also awarded a Hanai Fujiwara Wee Scholarship. It's 4,000 over four years. And his parents are Tom and Teresa Ferenkrug of Davenport. He, he plans to study at Lawrence Conservatory of Music. Dana Tanner of Central was awarded the Joan Kohlberg Lowen Scholarship. And her parents are Michael and Lisa Tanner of Davenport, and she'll be a student at Purdue this fall. Alicia Luebi of North won a Helen Poling Scholarship, and she is the daughter of David and Rachel Luebi of Davenport. She plans to attend Missouri University of Science and Technology in the fall. Evan Snaward, Snaward, did I say it right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Evan is from West, and he won a Helling Polling Scholarship, and he is the son of Jim and Sharon Snaward, Snaward of Bluegrass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he plans he plans to attend Iowa State University. I don't see the. Dwayne Sleet is the recipient of a Jerry Jurgens Memorial Scholarship. His mother is Rosalind Sleet of Davenport, and he will attend Illinois State University in the fall. Urbana-Champaign in the fall. Shelby Thede. <laughs> Shelby Thede of Central was also awarded a Jerry Jurgens Memorial Scholarship, and she is the daughter of Glenn and Debbie Thede of Davenport. She plans... She plans to attend either Loris or Blackhawk College. She's still undecided. Okay. Wa okay. Joaquin Bueno Diaz of West won the Davenport Schools Foundation Scholarship for 1000 His parents are Alejandro and Guadalupe Bueno of Davenport, and he will study at the University of Iowa this fall. Aaron Schaefer. Erin Schaefer is from Central, and she was awarded the Mary Linky Powell Scholarship. Her mother is Robin Schaefer of Davenport, and she will attend Iowa State University. <laughs> Keaton Rommel of West won the Brian Kepi Memorial Scholarship, and his parents are Kevin and Tracy Rommel of Davenport, and he will attend Southwest Minnesota State. I know she's here. Amaya Gooding of Central won the Lisa Arbiser Scholarship. In addition, in addition, she was awarded the Hall of Honor Jim Hester Memorial Scholarship. Her parents are Virgil and Virginia Gooding of Davenport. <laughs> and she, oh, she plans to attend the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in the fall. Lorraine Pereira yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of Central. 
was awarded a Hall of Honor, was awarded the Hall of Honor Neep Family Scholarship. Her parents are oh good, Mariner and Susan Pereira of Davenport, and she'll be a student at the University of California, Berkeley in the fall. <laughs> Aliyah Lopez of Central won, a Hall of, won the Hall of Honor Meyer Memorial Scholarship. Her mother is Angela Lacey of Davenport. <laughs> she plans to attend Loyola University. Thompson Teasdale. Thompson is from Central, and he is a recipient of the Hall of Honor of a Hall of Honor scholarship. His parents are Scott and Cynthia Teasdale. He plans to attend nice. Grinnell. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Hansen. Hannah is. Hannah is with Central. She is a recipient of the Hall of Honor Scholarship, and her pat parents are Matt and Jamie Hansen of Davenport. She will attend Drake. <laughs> Claire Trimble. No. Claire is a Central graduate, will be, when she was a recipient of the Buttleman Malcolm Arbiter Journalism Scholarship. She is the daughter of Matthew and Andrea Trimble of Davenport and plans to attend the Dominican University in River Forest, Illinois. Maggie Warner of North won the North High Music Scholarship. She is the daughter of Terry and Michelle Warner of Davenport and plans to attend Concordia University. Blaine Schmidt. <laughs> Blaine is from West and he won the West High Music Scholarship. He's the son of Michelle and Mark Schmidt of Blue Bluegrass. And he will attend the University of Iowa. I don't think, uh, Nathan Dunahue of Mid-City, these are, we have a few other awards. Nathan Dunahue of Mid-City won a Betty Nelson Technical Scholarship. His mother is Tina Dunahue of Davenport, and he will attend DMAC in Ankeny. Andrew Nelson of Mid-City won a Betty Nelson te Technical Scholarship. His mother is Rebecca Lamphere of Davenport, and he will attend Hamilton Tech. Uh, Brockton Frank of West won a Betty Nelson Technical Scholarship. He was also the recipient of a George Weiss Career Technical Scholarship. His mother is Penny Knock of Bluegrass, and he will attend uh, Scott Community. Uh, Be Becca Frederick of Central won a the DSF Future Educator Scholarship. Her parents are Christine and James Frederick of Davenport, and she plans to study at the University of Iowa. Corbin Wilson. Corbin is with Central. He was awarded a DSF Future Educator Scholarship. His parents are Nick and Linda Wilson of Davenport. <laughs> he plans to attend Vandercook College of Music. Sophia Pena. <laughs> Sophia is um, from West and she won a DSF Future Educator Scholarship. She is the daughter of John and Heather Pena of Davenport and plans to attend Blackhawk. I know this. Uh, Riley Niebuhr of Central won a Midwest One Near the One scholarship to study business. She's the daughter of Rory and Heather Niebuhr of Davenport, and she'll be a student at the University of Iowa. Isabella Volsom. <laughs> from Central was awarded a Midwest One Near the One scholarship. His, uh, her mother is, oh, I, Aya? Oh, her father, and her mother is Shannon Volsom of Bettendorf, and um, she will study at the University of California, San Diego in the fall. <laughs> James Heinrichs? Yes. <laughs> James is a recipient of our Brad Peck Memorial Scholarship. His parents are Joseph and Erica Heinrichs of Davenport, and he plans to attend ISU. I just have one more, they're not here. It's John Ward of West. He was also awarded a Brad Peck scholarship. His mother is Chris Ward, and he plans to attend the University of Iowa. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Downport Schools Foundation scholarship recipients. <laughs> Mr. Johansson, do you have any remarks or comments for the winners? <coughs> well, of course I do. Um, 
you know, I'm I'm really amazed at at this fantastic group of young people. You know, I I think about all of the things that are going on in our in our country and in our uh, state, but especially right here in Davenport and and I have such confidence in our future when I see all of you and your smiles and and thinking about all of the things that you're going to be doing I'm just just uh, full of wonderment I really am and and but also I'm and uh, on behalf of the board and our community uh, I can say that we are just amazingly proud of each one of you um, on top of that I have to say thank you to your parents and your families <coughs> for everything that you've done for your being here this evening as well and for uh, bringing up these great students in the way that you have so that's why I say thanks very much to all of you and uh, good fortune in the future we look forward you know some of you I know personally and and I'm so thankful for that opportunity to know you but others I don't I'm just just thankful for you representing our great district so thank you very much does anyone else speak oh well I think tonight is such a great evening the only thing I wish it were a little bit cooler, yeah. but but I think that this is a rare opportunity that the board has, and I would like to take a few extra minutes because uh, normally we just have boring old meetings that a few people attend, and uh, I would like to open it up though. Any board members that would like to say a few words, that'd be great. Director DeSalvo. I always go first. First of all, congratulations. That's just wonderful. I'm sitting here, I'm getting choked up listening to the things that you're going to do and all these scholarships that you've earned and go out there and take this world under, go get it. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do anything because the sky is the limit and go for it all. So keep up the great work and congratulations. <laughs> Director Hayes. Congratulations to each of you, and I was very proud of you to hear how everyone's branching out, going to different directions, Colorado, California, some are staying local, but it's okay. Wherever you feel that you're comfortable at and you want to be, that's where you need to be. Do you and do the best, be the best you that you can be. Director Snyder. I'm not sure how many ways we can say congratulations, but... Uh, as you guys go off and start the next stages of your life, find your passions and fight like hell for them. I'm proud of you guys. And when you go away to school, for those of you that are going away, be very patient with mom and dad as it's going to be a huge adjustment for them as well. Okay? Anybody else? Director Cool. You know, it, it uh, wasn't so long ago that you probably read this book by Dr. Sue, So the Places You Will Go. And uh, listening to all the places that you will go, I'm, I know that this is what we do when we fledge the nest. We go. We go hither and thither. But selfishly, I hope that you will find your way back. We spend a lot of time, your parents have, on your education. And we sure would like to see all of this, this enthusiasm and skill and, and love for life and the smiles that uh, President Johansson mentioned back here in Iowa. Um, you know, I was talking with, uh, with Jim a little bit before the, the session, and we're talking about leaving, leaving high school, moving on. And um, it's sad in a way, I guess, to, to leave your friends, um, but the places that you're going uh, is not necessarily a new start because you take everything that you've learned and everything that you've done the past 18 years and you'll carry it forward and it will provide the beauty in your life and the beauty that you'll share with, with others. And this is starting to sound like a commencement speech and it's, it's really just, just, we are all awed 
by what you have done and where you're going. And do come back, please. Any more? Director Mayfield. Yes. You know, I'm just amazed because many of you I knew as very young kids as you were growing up. But it also tells me about the capacity that all of you have in your potential and what you've achieved. I know the hard work that every single one of you have put in to get where you're at today. Those awards are nothing compared to all the effort that each and every one of you have put in to being who you are to get where you're at. That is just something that we get to recognize and celebrate to show our appreciation for what you've accomplished. So great job. I expect to hear about every single one of you in the future. You've done a, the best. Thanks. Director Gosa. First, I'd like to say you guys all did an awesome job getting where you are now. Um, and I hope you guys uh, do the best to your full of potential and reach all your dreams and goals. But you guys did an awesome job, and I'm really proud of you all. That's Superintendent Tate, you have a few words? I'll have to. I can't just. <laughs> <laughs> so I have 15,500 students, and I'm proudest of you tonight. You're my favorites. So thank, congratulations. <laughs> well, Johanna, it's uh, back to you. Okay. You students, if I could have you, we're going to take our photo with the board. I need you to kind of everyone get behind them all the way from uh, Director Mayfield to Director Hayes and squish. Did everybody yeah, we appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, students, <laughs> parents, families. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's about it. <laughs>
All right, we'll go ahead and continue the meeting. Um, next is uh, another recognition, and I believe Superintendent Tate, um, you'll be bringing up uh, Don. Yes, Don Saul. School board members, administrators, and Dr. Tate, um, thank you so much for giving us a few moments tonight to recognize the members of our school board. May is School Board Appreciation Month, and we don't say thank you often enough. So tonight, um, you're going to hear from three individuals who want to tell you what your service has meant to them. And first up is going to be Malavika Shrikande. And she is a member of the Local School Improvement Advisory Committee, a parent of a daughter at Sudlow. That would be her lovely daughter right here, <laughs> in case you were wondering. And um, she is also employed by St. Ambrose University. Maliki, Malavika? Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And good evening, all of you. I hope I'm okay with the mic here. Okay. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, once again good evening all of you as we all know uh, there are more than 1,900 men and women uh, who serve the local school districts uh, for Iowa's 336 school boards uh, and they uh, look after the education of about four and a half million students and oversee a budget of five and a half billion dollars as we also know all of our members of the school board uh, have been elected by our local community and you all donate your personal time and service to serve our school district. President uh, Johansson, Vice President Rich Cleveland, members of the board, Linda Hayes, uh, Julie, please pardon me if I'm mispronouncing your last names or your first names, uh, Julie DeSalvo, uh, Jamie Snyder, uh, Daniel Gosa, and Clyde Mayfield a heartfelt thanks on behalf of the local improvement school advisory committee on behalf of parents on behalf of guardians and friends of the local school of our school district you are all our superheroes extraordinary people who have taken the responsibility to tackle this enormous job of governing our school district through our school board meetings as citizen leaders, you face complex challenges. You have the most important volunteer jobs uh, in the country, and you face the toughest challenges in elected American government. Public education is the backbone of our American society, and local school boards are deeply rooted in this tradition. It's the foundation on which our democracy was built. We often forget the personal sacrifices you all make. You contribute enormous number of hours uh, each year leading our district, advocating for the children in our school district, keeping abreast with professional development in the latest trends in the, latest trends in the educational readership, community involvement, and in the past few years, countless passionate please to legislators speaking out against our budget cuts and pushing for smart reforms. Your job as a school board member is tough. The hours are long, thanks are far and few between. Too often, we are quick to criticize your decisions without really understanding the mechanics behind those decisions. It's time we change that. I was reminded of a quote by Tom Broker, and I quote here, there is a place in America to take a stand. It is public education. It is the underpinning of our cultural and political system. It is the great common ground. Public education, after all, is the engine that moves us as a society towards a common destiny. It is in public education that American dream begins to take shape. 
Well, I have two questions after this. As parents and guardians of our school district students here, how can we help our school board achieve this dream? How can we help our students help learn more about the board and what it does for our school district and our schools in the district? I have a few thoughts and I would share them in our next meetings with the school administration and our local PTAs. That is my plan. It is time to better understand how all each and one of you work together to prepare for today's students to be tomorrow's leaders. I once again sincerely extend my heartfelt thanks and best wishes on behalf of the parents for your vision. And as we go through these tumultuous financial times in our system, your will to support and advocate for our Davenport Community District, a district of distinction students, for they, these students, are not worthless. Thank you very much for giving this time. And before I, I, I give up this podium, I would, like to, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Superintendent Dr. Tate, Don, and the wonderful people in this building uh, who help make things happen. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to speak. Next, I'd like you to hear from one of our students. Thompson Teasdale is a senior at Central High School. He's going to be graduating very soon and he is going to be um, studying pre-law at Grinnell. Thompson? Uh, thank you, Don. Well, it's been my greatest privilege and joy to work with you, members of the school board, in our never-ending, it seems, fight for equal school funding. I am also very grateful to have had you as well as others as the head of our district, on my district as well. I could not have asked for a better set of men and women. Throughout my time at McKinley, Sudlow, and finally Central, your actions have only reinforced my belief that you do care from the bottom of your hearts about my education and the education of every student in the district. And such was and continues to be proven in our fight together to equalize funding for all districts in Iowa. The teachers, the school board members, and the students, they all fought together. We weren't each of those titles then, we were one. We were just people fighting for the same cause. Many districts in Iowa along the course of my journey did not fight as passionately as we do. Again, I cannot be more grateful for finding my home here in Davenport. I, have a, I know I have a superintendent and a school board that are willing to risk everything for their students. I sat on the Legislative Active Co Action Committee and I listened to Mr. Johansson speak to all the things the state was willing to do to stop us. Fire the superintendent and the whole school board, liquidate the district. <laughs> Yet not a person in that room was interested in backing down. Everyone there was thinking of the students first. Throughout my time in the Davenport School District, I've been met time and time again by teachers and administrators who care deeply about their students. We together are willing to stand up and say we are not worth less. We are willing to risk everything for what's right. We're even willing to break the law. I'm proud to have worked alongside you, and while it's a shame that there was no meaningful change this year, I know you will be fighting as hard next year, and this time it'll be different. This time the state will have to act because we are not worthless, and they know it. I just wish they were able to show it as much as you fine people are able to. I believe that I speak for all my fellow peers when I say thank you so much for all that you do. It is with great sadness that I must bid this district farewell and give it a final adieu. The least I can do is humbly thank you for your support in the funding fight and for a fine 13 years of my life. And I think that you all deserve a round of applause for your tireless work. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, representing the uh, Davenport community is the Honorable Frank Klipsch, Mayor of the City of Davenport. Well, first things first, I want an early retainer on Thompson. Uh, 
I, maybe I can get it at the ground level here and get, get you lined up for a you know, reasonable price. Um, wonderful job. I was going to say, yeah, what he said. Um, yeah, um, and Malavika, thank you for your comments as well. Malavika is also uh, just participating in our Citizens Academy. We have 25 citizens who signed up, 60 actually uh, submitted names, and we chose 25, and we'll have another one in the fall. But she is one of those graduates next uh, Wednesday where we're giving out the uh, recognition for that, and I have jobs for you in the city as well. So um, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, you know, I, what, what initially how we started here was, um, again, all my kids and grandkids go to school in Davenport. Um, one of my sons is a principal. Um, they're all very much involved. And, um, and they, they've all done well. And people at one point can, were trying to talk us into, as we built a house, which we now have on West Central Park, off of West Central Park, that we ought to go to another district when we were building a new house. And we consciously made a decision to move where we moved because of what Davenport Schools has to offer. The fact is, we need to make sure we celebrate the diversity in this community. And that's one thing uh, that I think we've got to, as a community and as a school district, we need to celebrate that diversity as something that others don't have. You don't have that ratio? Well, then maybe you need to move to Davenport because you're missing something. And I think it's important to understand that as, as we move forward. Um, initially, the idea to come uh, happened some time ago. We did a resolution and uh, sent, to, uh, sent, sent to the state. And I just want to read it very quickly. It's be resolved by the City Council of the City of Davenport, resolution encouraging the Iowa General Assembly to adopt legislation to eliminate current disparity in pupil, uh, per pupil fun uh, funding. Whereas the Iowa legislator and governor annually set a state cost per pupil, which determines the amount of revenue available to school districts to invest in the education of Iowa students, whereas 172 of Iowa school districts have been historically granted spending authority in, in addition to the state cost per pupil, as much as 175 per student, yet 165 Iowa school districts are prohibited from accessing the spending authority and effectively capped at the state cost per pupil. Whereas historical spending patterns of school districts over the four decades, over four decades ago are the basis for this unequal revenue per student and do not reflect student or district needs today, whereas local school boards are best able to balance the needs of local taxpayers and their communities and students, and now, therefore, it be resolved and by the City Council of, the, of Davenport, Iowa, that the Iowa General Assembly is encouraged to adopt amendments to the Iowa Code that eliminate the current disparity in pupil per pupil funding between Iowa's children. And that was signed by me and sent to the state. Um, but that was more, the reason I wanted to read that to you is, um, I think we've had a, an era of evolving relationships with the district. Um, and I hope there's even a more enheightened era now. One of the goals that we approved in our goal setting session for the next two years is increased activity, increased involvement with Davenport Community Schools. Um, this is the heart and soul. Sometimes Art and I, when we get together, I think we have to understand the fact that what bigger responsibility that you have, you're educating of almost 16,000 ch children in our community. The awesome responsibility is not lost on us. Um, and we've got to find ways to encourage and enhance and evolve that relationship even further. You know, I think uh, you're all doing, obviously, what we just talked about, is the, and Thompson did an eloquent job sharing, was the, the inequity in funding. And we need to continue to work with that, and we're committed to do whatever we can to do that, to help you with that as well. I think also the the poverty initiatives that you're working on are extremely important. When uh, Rich said earlier, um, talking about take this, what you're learning from those students and take it out into the community, we are that community and that's essential that in fact is what you do and we've always said when over my years at the Y, it's not what we do, um, what we do at the Y, it's what you do when you're not at the Y. And that's the values that are taught and we need to deal with that and we need to collectively pick up the slack from here on out, working with children and families. Years ago, um, we were living in, in, a, in New Mexico, and we were a little dis, displeased with the school system. And a gentleman came by and told us, who's a, with the Y uh, on the board, and uh, his wife, they were a lawyer and a doctor, said all of our kids went to school here. 
they went, and one's now a lawyer, one's a doctor, and one's a physicist at big schools around the country. And he said, if you abdicate the responsibility of educating your children to anyone, you get what you deserve. And I think that's the key. But also, if a city abdicates the responsibility of educating their children to anyone, we get what we deserve. And I'm committed to that as I look across the 10 council aldermen in our community. They're all committed to that as well, which I think is equally important. And, and I think the whole district of distinction connection is extremely important also. Um, we are a great district. And that's, I say we, not just you are a great district or we are a great city. We are a great district. And I think it's important to understand that. That's who lives and breathes and works and grows our, our families and builds our homes. All that's important. And this is extremely part of that, extremely importantly part of this whole process as well. I have letters that I asked individually we wrote to all of you um, that I wrote and representing our council as well. And uh, I want to thank you personally for all the efforts as my, I think it's 125 days in the office now, um, I realize that we don't please everyone all the time. And, uh, and someone's going to bring up their issues and their comments and their contacts and all the other things that go on. But the reality of it is you're in the right direction. We know it. The community knows it. And hold true the course because it's extremely important to all of us. Um, I want to thank you all for the work that you do. I know, you know, we see this kind of material information in this evening tonight, but there's so much more that goes into this. And I know in talking, I've gotten to talk to a lot of you, a lot with, with Ralph and Art, uh, but many of you. Clyde I've known for a long time. Linda I've, knows, I've known for a long time, and Rich, and I've met Dan. And the others, as I say in my note, let's get together. We know, I need to know you better as well because that's what the, how important this is. But you deeply care about what's happening in this community. Um, and I think it's important that we let everybody understand that and let you know that we as a city appreciate what you've done and truly appreciate all the hard work that you do. And I want to thank you all for not only as the mayor and the city council, but all the 103 residents of Davenport. We all thank you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Mayor Klipsch, will you stick around for a couple of minutes? <coughs> Okay, thank you. <coughs> Art, Don, is that about it? Okay, thank you. Uh, it's it's a. It's a rare opportunity that the board has to have an evening like this. We, we oftentimes get to uh, experience the showcases where we can see what's going on in one of our schools. <coughs> we have presentations by a variety of people oftentimes to, to help us understand more about what's going on in the district. Um, it's really rare. Uh, that we have the time to uh, an opportunity to see things like tonight where we have so many great students with uh, scholarships and I know there are a lot more out there um, but probably especially rare is being thanked by three people uh, in one evening and I've got a couple of words afterwards but I I would like the board to uh, share any thoughts that they've had on these before and I hope Mayor Clips you can stick around till we're done here you don't have another uh, meeting to get to do <laughs> you do yeah. okay when do you have to leave okay okay then oh we won't be 10 minutes yeah. I'll watch it no, no, please. That's okay but but I do want to open it up to the board it's going to be really good, okay? But I'll open it up to the board first. Anybody want to say anything? Nobody? Oh, Director Hayes. Some of you just don't know. You just don't know. This is one of the most important, tireless, thankless jobs that you can have, but it is so rewarding to be a part of the educational process in the Davenport Community District, School District. 
We thank each of you for your kind words. And sometimes you wonder with different things going on, especially controversial issues, everyone in the city must hate what you're doing. But you can't please all the people all the time, like was said, but we do try to make the best decision in the best interest of the majority of the people. And thank you so much for thinking of us and taking the time out of your day to come up and step forward and actually speak from your heart and say how you feel about the board. And again, thank you. Anybody else? Director DeSalvo. Mayor Klipsch, I live very near you. I'll bring coffee down some morning and we can visit. I think you've bought a lot of stuff from my child running through the neighborhood selling raffle tickets or something, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, it, it truly is an honor to represent the community it is one of the most challenging, and I've said this a bunch, but it's very heart-wrenching. Um, but day in, day out, it is an honor to represent, as we saw today, the, the extreme talent that we have in our, our school system. Our staff is phenomenal, um, should be acknowledged every single day for the work that they do to help our children every single day. So it's nice to be recognized, but um, it's truly an honor just to be here. So thank you for the kind words tonight. Anybody else? Director Kluhl. About, um, about six years ago, I was running a political campaign, and I did a lot of door knocking in the neighborhoods. And I'm doing that again. Um, and I, I ran into somebody today as I was out delivering signs. And uh, she said, I remember talking to you. You stood and you talked with me for about 10 minutes about the issues, and you listened. And I said, you know what? Thank you because elected officials don't get a lot of thank yous. This is the first time in 16 years on the board that we've had anything other than ourselves thanking each other on, on <laughs> state board month. And so this is just a real um, privilege to be able to sit back and listen to folks say that we thank you for what you've done. So I, I appreciate that. that uh, that'll energize us for, for another year going forward. Thank you all. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I've got about six minutes, so. <laughs> no, I won't take all that. I, uh, I was really humbled uh, this evening as, as I thought about Malavika and, and Thompson and Mayor Klipsch, the words that you expressed and the organizations that you represented um, I'm I, I think I normally seem like a pretty laid-back kind of guy um, but sometimes I get a little teary-eyed and I don't think anybody really knows it um, but tonight is one of those nights and <laughs> no <laughs> no not this evening but but uh, I do appreciate all of the leadership also that all three of you represented just in getting up here and and saying those words and and your articulation and your eloquence in presenting those thoughts um, was was really I think it was heartfelt not only by you as you made those words or gave them but by us <coughs> I do think that we have a fantastic community, the whole community. And a lot of people, uh, Director Kluhl talked about students coming back, and maybe you will someday. Uh, a lot of you are going to be going who knows where, doing who knows what, and all of those fantastic things. Um, but this is a great place to live. It's a great place to, to uh, have a family it's a great place for everything that goes on here and I think a lot of that is because of the people that we have in our community the great people that we have the leadership uh, we have we have a great mayor we have a great superintendent um, and other leaders in our community that are willing to uh, give it all for what happens so I just want to say thank you again for your words and for you giving up that time and thoughtfulness and coming to share that with us. It's very, very appreciated. Thanks.
Mayor Klipsch, we're done. You got four extra minutes. Hey, Don, I want to say thank you, too, for helping to organize this. That, that really appreciated it. And I know a lot of work goes into these things. And so thanks again. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think uh, next up is our student school board members. And, uh, oh, oh, the mayor already left. Um, I'd like, one thing I wanted to note was uh, Malavika and Thompson, if you would give us your, um, the notes for your words, I'd like to put them into our record. And Don, if you could get the speech from, uh, from the mayor when you can. And would that be okay? And Thompson, is that okay? Sure, okay, and if you want, uh, if you leave or something, you can just drop them off with our secretary. But, but your words were, were amazing. Uh, so we'll move on to our student school board members who have served for the 2015-16 school year. And uh, we really appreciate all of your valuable input. So before I give out a certificate to each one of you, I want to open this up again to, uh, to the board. And we can either do it in toto or individually. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. Any thoughts? Oh. Oh, they do. <laughs> you want to do the presentation yeah. first or <coughs> afterwards? Why don't you do it first? All right. Okay, now, now uh, Gabe and Lorraine, you have a presentation. <laughs> and is it like a PowerPoint or something, or what is it? Okay. Do any of the others of you, before we start with this, do you have any words, comments? Just tell us what, what the year was like for you. Go for it. Andrew. <coughs> huh? It's your choice. Why don't you go up there so we can all see you. So as many of you guys know, I ran for school board. Um, but I kind of wanted just to come up here and kind of let's take a look back of when we started. Met all the stuff we had to go through. You okay over there, Mr. Smith? You okay? Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. um, I think that's inevitable. But um, So I kind of wanted to. It's not? All right. I remember that. I just ran a 5K, and I'm feeling it too. I, but anyway, um, so I kind of wanted to take like a step back. Just like look at what we've had to go through this year. We went through an election, and at, above that we went through a special election where we got a new um, director, which I think that's a first for almost everybody here is because we don't usually get here till after. Um, and then also we, as a student school board, ha had to sit through um, one of the toughest decisions a school board has ever had to make, or ever has to make. And I think that's super important, and it really taught us kind of a life lesson um, about you know the impact you guys have in the community and we also got to see how much of an impact the community has on uh, the school board uh, r rather than just the elections they can force special elections in that case um, and I think that was like the biggest thing that we learned as a whole that just the impact it had and the impact you guys have in the community so that's where I kind of wish the mayor was here too because I'm kind of hitting on that too um, so I just kind of wanted to thank you guys for all that you do. And I did not know May, so was the school board month, so hey, cool. Um, but yeah, so I just kind of wanted to thank you guys for all that you do and um, continue to work hard. And I'm sure I will come back because my school, my school is only Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'll be here Mondays for you guys. Carolyn or Jim? Go ahead, Jim. Uh, well, I mean, Andrew pretty much uh, hit uh, everything I was going to say. Uh, we, we obviously learned a lot just by uh, watching these meetings go down. As he said, um, there were a lot of difficult choices you guys had to make this year, and there was just, uh, it was, seemed like a weird year for you guys, kind of kept you on your toes and stuff. 
but I think it was really cool just as an example to see how the schools are run and uh, what goes into all of that. And so I'd just like to thank you for showing us uh, how it all works. And um, you guys have been doing great. I, I'm really excited to see this uh, presentation. So <laughs> I'll keep it short and sweet. But uh, thank you very much, guys. It's been awesome. So. <laughs> Sure, is he? Um, I have to say that um, this school year has been completely eye-opening for me. I've grown up a lot this school year. Um, and even within the last three years of high school, I've grown up a lot. And when I got into um, Iowa Youth Congress, I I, it's almost like I spread my wings. I got to realize what teachers and staff and unions and the school board have to do to keep our futures bright. And it just gave me a lot of appreciation for you guys and, you know, the mayor, the principal, just teachers and staff and how hard you guys work to, you know, give us that push in our lives so that we can, you know, become something big and bring back something for our community. And that's that's number one why I wanted to jump straight into being a school board member. I really did because it's it's empowering and um, I just I just can't wait till I can be, bring something back for my community because you know this is my home. I, I live here, you know this is where I was raised and I just want, you know, a lot I want this place to you know grow and just become awesome and wonderful and <laughs> I just really appreciate you guys I really do and thank you so Carolyn do you have any any words I mean yeah I'll put you on the spot huh? <laughs> Well, speak into the microphone so we can hear you. I never really thought of what the higher-ups did in our system, so it was cool to see the intricacies of it all. And I realized how hard your guys' job really is, especially with dealing with the closing of J.B. Young and the outcry from the community, because it must have been really difficult to do what you knew it was right, like for monetary purposes, but yeah. I'm really bad at speaking on the spot, by the way. so. <laughs> You're doing just it fine. Told us we have done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. All right, Gabe and Lorraine, you're up. Before we start this, I just want to say. Uh, when we uh, were challenged to tell you guys what we learned as school board members, Lorraine's first thought was to uh, make a movie about all the different board directors. And I was like, um, you know, presentations are good. Get to the point. So this is a presentation about what we, uh, me and Lorraine, have learned as school board members. All right. Uh, first. Uh, we just wanted to iterate that uh, you guys are here staying up for what you believe in and what you think is right. Um, there's a quote from American poet Susie Cassum, uh, stand up for what is right even if you stand alone. And uh, this is shown by you guys for fighting for equal funding. Uh, it shows the courage of the board and to fight even if the opponent appears much bigger than you as a state. And uh, in the JB closing, even if uh, people were in the minority, they still still voted no, uh, just because they thought that's what they that was right. And uh, all the people that came up for a public forum that night, uh, when you guys had to make that choice, uh, they were making their voice heard because they thought uh, it's only right that I uh, come up here and share my thoughts and uh, my opinions. Um, so next up is passion. Um, and hi, my name is Lorraine from Central. That's my last time saying that ever. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> um, but directors, you you do this on a voluntary basis, and um, that's amazing. From from coordinating the Des Moines trip um, to going to always encouraging us to um, engaging with school events to coming to these meetings um, sometimes and staying until like 10 p.m. to all the things that we don't even see. Um, you have shown us to what lengths true passion can truly take you and um, you've inspired us by doing so. Um, oh, also you've risked your, your jobs and um, reputations for your passions and that's pretty remarkable. Okay, um, uh, sharing ideas and brainstorming. So there are seven board members and you guys all com come from different walks of life and uh, you all have different experiences. Uh, so you all come up, come at problems from different points of view. Um, it's like there's w more than one way to skin a cat, I've always heard. Never said it, but I've heard it. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and uh, at every meeting, you guys always have discussion items, and uh, anyone can chime in, give their point of view, and uh, attack the problem from the best uh, angle. And also, with the public forum, you can hear the community and listen to them for other ideas that you seven might not have. All right, so yes, this was a very unique year um, in that we went to Des Moines and um, had that forum with local officials at Ambrose as well. Um, we learned a lot about the public policy process and you gave us the backing and support we needed to basically express our concerns about school funding and now we have the courage to go on and advocate about other issues of importance to us. So um, we really appreciate that. Order and planning. Uh, these... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm always sent emails about uh, agendas for the week. I don't know if I've ever opened one, but uh, they're always there for me to look at. And uh, these meetings are always set up in uh, the most logical way possible. Uh, there are a lot of rules and bylaws that may seem like a hindrance, but they keep the board objective on topics. And uh, even if the meeting's four hours, you guys still know what's next. And uh, you, st you stood by the rules and the planning by electing a new sc uh, school board member after uh, Director Dickman had left. And it was, uh, how do I say it? Uh, it was very, people knew what was next. Uh, they knew uh, what rules had to be followed and what, uh, what laws you know, couldn't be broken. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So I'd like to uh, <laughs> share this quote from Gabe <laughs> that one time, it was very bold. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, <laughs> so yeah, um, public speaking um, was never really my forte. That's why I kind of wanted to take on this one. Um, my freshman year, I never really talked. I only started really talking to people my junior year, and here I am speaking in front of you right now. So um, you have really, really helped me break down this fear of public speaking, um, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, and you've also allowed me to kind of express my thoughts uh, more co coherently, especially through um, compiling the student board reports, um, et cetera. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> she. Uh, I may have. S okay. I may. I may have said that. But. <laughs> um, we just want to thank you once again. Um, let me think. Uh, you guys. You. You. You guys listen. You guys plan. Uh, you guys like to solve problems that we have as a school board. Um, we thank you for that. Um. And we also like to thank you for listening to different schools. You guys have a lot of responsibilities, and uh, I'd say you guys handle them very well, from what I can see. And uh, thank you. So yeah, um, 
So those are some, some pictures from over the, uh, over the year. Um, so thank you so much for all you do. That's kind of an evolution of Gabe and I's friendship from this year because we, we didn't really talk. Yeah, we that. wouldn't have gotten to know each other without this experience. So we're very grateful. Oh, and that's when Lorraine was homecoming queen. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> wow, what a <coughs> what a uh, great evening this is. So we're just about ready to um, give out these certificates. But now I would ask um, if the board has any comments, um, because once we give the certificates out, it's likely that our uh, student school board members may even take off. <laughs> All right, so I'll open it up for the board. Director Snyder. Well, I wanted to start by thanking you guys. Um, you know, one of the surprises that I find from being on the board, and teachers get it, administrators get it, and now I kind of get it. You guys aren't just Davenport kids. You're our kids. And I would have never thought that I would one day have almost 16,000 kids. <laughs> But you guys sitting there, we are, every year we say our, our student board members get better and better. And I mean, this year we had two student board members that actually had enough passion for what we were doing to run for the board. And I don't know if that's ever happened anywhere, um, but it happened right here. Um, you guys and the other kids in Davenport, you actually make it fairly easy for us to do what we have to do because we know that it's in their best interest why we're sitting here. And I think I'll stop before I get a little more emotional, but um, just a fair warning too, uh, when you guys walk across the stage, um, you're probably gonna have seven board members that mob you and hug you as you're walking across. <laughs> so make sure your hat is pinned on well. Um, but to, to say that you know, you probably hear, you know, us say a lot how proud we are, but we are. So thank you guys. Anybody else? Director DeSalvo. I just would like to say thanks as well. We know that it's difficult to get here on Mondays, and I know all of you are involved in a whole lot of other things outside of this. So we appreciate your time. <coughs> your input has been wonderful. It, it really makes a difference in... in what we have to think about and opens our eyes to things that we would never be aware of. So good luck to all of you next year. We are going to miss you. You've got a tough act to follow. I don't know how we're going to get any better, although there's a DeSalvo kid at North that might. Uh, uh, anyway, thank you for all that you've done. We appreciate it, and best of luck to all of you. And I will be hugging you all at graduation, so you better. <laughs> Anybody else? Director Cool. I think it's uh, it's interesting why we get emotional, why Director Snyder, you know, tears start to come to his eyes at moments like this. Um, and I think it's because words really don't express what it is that we feel. And so we reach for things and poets sometimes um, are able to put things down into words that we feel. And I was going to write a poem tonight, but I, I didn't get around to it. Um, I probably should have because uh, I... I uh, the time that you spent here this year has been relatively long for you, 18, 17, 18, 19 years of age. I mean, this was a big part of your life. It's not such a big part of mine because I'm 65 years old. Uh, so if you prorate that, you know, it was a much bigger piece of your time than it was mine. But you all will take something with you, and I thank you for sharing your thoughts tonight. Um, um, we'll take something away, too. And it's not only your appreciation for the things that you've learned, and I'm glad that you did pick up some things, because I'm always concerned about that. And Lorraine, I'm glad that you, you feel more comfortable now talking and can think on your feet a bit better, because as a doctor, you're going to have to do that. So I'm glad to have been part of, of that experience for you. So um, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Director Gosa. I'm going to steal your word. 
I think you guys did an incredible job. And uh, I will uh, miss all your guys' input. And uh, I look forward to seeing where you guys go in life. So thank you. Director Mayfield. Well, first, I'd like to congratulate all of you for what you've accomplished. Uh, all the things that you do from day to day, yet you have time to come here and sit for an hour or two. That in itself is incredible. And I say that for young people because most young people are know, I know are very busy all the time. And you were busy making things happen. So thank you for being here. And of course, there's a couple of you, uh, Gay and Izzy, that I've probably known since you were five or six years old and know the family. And uh, I knew that one day you guys would be sitting with well, I mentioned two of them. I guess I didn't mention you know, either. But I've known all of you for so long. And you've always been able to accomplish and you've always been hard workers. So good luck and thank you for what you've given us. Director Snyder. One other thing I forgot I was going to say earlier. Um, Director Mayfield brought up a, a key word, accomplishment. Um, I was talking with a former board member um, or student board member, Hannah Harrington, who was here a little bit ago. And one of the things we were talking about is how she kind of took high school graduation for granted. It was kind of the logical next step. She really didn't put two and two together um, that, you know, it really is a huge accomplishment. So when you guys are walking across the stage and you're getting your diploma and you're at your parties and you're with your friends and you're celebrating with your family, be proud of yourselves because this is a huge accomplishment. There's not going to be very many things you do in your life that it takes you 13 years to do it. So please don't take it for granted. Be proud of the work you've done because every one of you, including Thompson Hyden back there, uh, has earned it and uh, you deserve the next few days that are coming your way. Director Hayes. Actually, it's a ditto to what everyone else has said, but I enjoy watching you all. Actually, I think we've all grown together. We've all had issues to deal with that we had never dealt with before. And it was just nice having you here, seeing your insight, or hearing your insight, watching your growth, your participation, and everything that you've done. So we really do thank you for everything that you've done and wish you the best of success in the future to come. Anybody else? Any student board members? <coughs> I've got a few things I want to say. You know, I it's interesting listening to you. You've said things that I've never thought about. And it makes me think back when I was in school and in high school and graduating. And I'll tell you what, I didn't even know there was a school board. I didn't know that there was a superintendent. I was just having a good time. I really was. I, I really enjoyed school. I enjoyed life. Everything was good. Um, I didn't appreciate everything. And, and you all talked about things so passionately tonight one or more of you talked about appreciating teachers. And that's something that I didn't do when I was your age. Later on, I started to realize some of the impacts that teachers had had. But, but you all seem so poised, um, so confident, so with it. Um, One of the things that I thought about when you were talking about different things that that have happened with you over this past year and and right now in this moment I have kind of forgotten about some of those things 
And some of those were pretty big deals. Some of those were very, you know, the, the three minutes and 33 seconds. I mean, there were a lot of uh, issues that we had never dealt with before. Uh, the new state law was challenging. How do you make it work? Um, there were even the, the issue of uh, uh, JB, the planning that went into that, and you two mentioned it, um, there were hours and hours and hours of planning that went into just figuring out how to do certain things. Nobody knows that except for a few people. But for you all to recognize it, I think, is astounding. <coughs> but, but this appreciation, like I say, I, I'm, uh, I don't know quite the right words to say. Um, and maybe that's what Director Kluhl was talking about. And maybe he will grace us with a uh, poem later on, even if he doesn't have it written now but we've got a couple weeks left. Um, but I think it's true. And I think, oh, one of the things that I was thinking about too is that when I'm in the moment up here, I think that there were times where I may not have seen you. You know, and I, I think that we tried and I think, and I thank the other board members for watching out for you and hopefully we, we were able to recognize you because um, your input was really insightful. It was something that we needed and we really, really value uh, student board input. And I'm appreciative also for uh, our board secretary helps organize that each year. And I think that each year the organization has gotten better, the administration has gotten better. Um, and I guess the last thing that I want to say is that I'm, I'm 61 years old, and I love life. I enjoy so many things that go on. <coughs> but you students have inspired me. And it's, it's exciting to be inspired by you young people. It really is. You know, and to think about all the fantastic things that you are going to do, but the the words that you use, the things that you're saying, your, your thoughts and your passions just in being here um, are just amazing. And they've helped me personally uh, as well. So I want to say thank you to each one of you. I'll end it with that. Um, we're going to give the certificates. I want to offer one opportunity, too, to our superintendent. Do you have anything to say about our student board members no okay we've said it all we'll uh, <coughs> we'll go ahead and hand out a certificate all right is Don still here are you going to get some pictures at all of this? I don't know what order these are in, but they're in the order that I'll, uh, I'll use right here. They all say about the same thing, but I'm going to read each one. First up is Gabe Barron. Central High School. <laughs> this is <coughs> from the Davenport Community Schools. In recognition for serving as a student board member for the Davenport School Board during the 2015-2016 school year, presented to Gabe Barron. Thank you very much, Gabe. is Lorraine Ferreira.
Ralph, Joe, I'm Ralph from the Davenport School Board. <laughs> from the Davenport Community Schools, in recognition for serving as a student board member for the Davenport School Board during the 2015-2016 school year, presented to Lorraine Pereira from Central High School. Thank you very much. Thank you. James Heinrichs. From the Davenport Community Schools, in recognition for serving as a student board member for the Davenport School Board during the 2015-2016 school year, presented to James Heinrichs West High School. Thank you very much, James. Carolyn? additional certificates, one for Thomas Clay from North High School and Tiana Manley from West High School who are not here this evening, but we'll get those to them later. Um, it's an appropriate time to take a quick recess and uh, wherever all of you board members will be going, but thank you again for all of your service. All right. Well, <coughs> the, a couple of the student board members wanted to uh, take the opportunity to have the last board reports, the student board reports. And uh, so I'll turn it over to uh, Superintendent Tate. Well, thanks for staying. And James, let's start with you. Congratulations on getting your Eagle Scout. That's a, a huge accomplishment. Uh, thank you. Um, as you said, my name is James. I'm from West, and here is my student board report. 
<laughs> Alright, so um, it's been a while since I've last been here, so uh, there's been a lot going on at West within this last uh, term. Uh, some of the main things were uh, we had AP testing uh, within the past couple weeks, and so lots of students were showing up early or in the afternoon to take uh, tests that will hopefully get a lot of them college credit, and so it's great to see how many students were getting into those advanced classes and uh, really taking advantage of uh, that education. Um, uh, let's see, there was a lot of uh, groups at West going and uh, volunteering with Living Lands and Waters, um, and so we've uh, gotten a lot of students to just go out and help the community, and it's been um, really cool to see that too. Um, our senior picnic was uh, last Thursday, yeah, Thursday, and uh, it was kind of like a goodbye to all our seniors one day where we just get to all hang out and just relax and have fun, play games, and so it was a great time. Uh, we played lots of games, like a uh, game that uh, some friends and I invented called Frizzball. If you, if you want to know, it'll probably be a big thing within the next couple of years. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of a mixture of frisbee, football, and soccer. I, I, it's difficult to explain without going through all the rules, but uh, it's, it's pretty fun. So we got a big game of that going, so that was cool. Um, uh, our track team and our um, golf teams have been doing exceptionally well, uh, our, our girls' golf team. Um, and so lots of them are going on to... Uh, compete at higher levels and so that will be awesome to see and um, finally one of the things that I'm most proud of is that our charity week was uh, a couple oh, well a week or two ago and so our student senate got a bunch of different uh, events set up to uh, raise money for King's Harvest Ministries and so we had some dodgeball games, a glow-in-the-dark badminton tournament, um, a lip-sync battle. One teacher got a haircut, uh, but his hair, you know, it was it was down to his shoulders, so it was a little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that was cool. And uh, we also had our annual variety show, and so there was a lot of talent there. And with all of those events, we were able to raise $15,000 for King's Harvest Ministries, uh, over or passing our goal by $5,000. And so it was just great to see all the West students get involved and help uh, the less fortunate. And also, um, just kind of going back to the uh, board reports from you guys, I, I got the opportunity to see some pretty cool things uh, from middle schoolers. Um, last weekend I went to judge a speech and debate competition and I was very impressed by uh, what I saw I only did one round because I had to go and do some other stuff but some of those kids were just like they blew my mind like they were uh, giving speeches on a problem and how to find a solution and there was just so much like amazing things uh, to be learned from them like I learned more about space trash like just floating in outer space out in the middle of nowhere that I never thought I would know. So it was crazy, but I was uh, glad to see it. And I agree, it's uh, it's great to see just that our future uh, students are going to be bright leaders in the community. So thank you all again for uh, being here and uh, doing your work. Thank you. I am. Um I Lisa Parker Tatum from Mid City, or also known as Izzy. Um, uh, on Friday the 20th, we had the end of the year kickoff where um, Ellis Keel and his band from River Music Experience performed. Um, they enjoyed popsicles and grill. I didn't attend, so I was doing work. <laughs> um, and um, Lynn Myers from our science. Um, our science teacher at Mid City um, was awarded a $30,000 SCRA grant for the continuation of our urban farm project. Um, we were going to use that 
uh, money to buy like a tractor or and tills and things like that to make it easier for us to um, tend our our, gar our gardens. Um, uh, Wednesday, uh, of course, seven o'clock uh, at the Galvin Fine Arts Center. Um, our seniors will be walking the stage and grabbing their diplomas that day. And I will be there and seeing all you guys. So, <laughs> um, thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lorraine from Central. <laughs> um, so um, as school has been winding down, um, we've had quite a few events going on for our seniors. Um, we had our senior awards night two weeks ago today, um, and um, one third of the graduating class was awarded um, an AP medal. So that means that one third of our graduating class this year has taken at least one AP course. Um, so that was pretty amazing. Um, we also had our senior picnic two weeks ago. It was really fun, just a great day to hang out and um, just kind of say our farewells almost, I guess. Uh, finals are tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, and yeah. Um, so Izzy was talking about their school garden. Um, we actually had a school garden um, as well. Uh, the project started in 2013. It was called Sprouts and Scholars. And um, so we, we built this awesome school, uh, like this garden at our school, and um, uh, the pro start classes used our vegetables. It was really great. Um, unfortunately, due to the construction, the uh, gardens were torn out. Um, but we did get a um, deal with the contractors uh, so that they would build a new garden for us. And so um, a new bed is in place. And um, just today, t uh, 10 blueberry bushes and six tomato plants were planted. So it's, it's getting going. <laughs> um, uh, our choir and orchestra um, kids just got, for, uh, got back from New York City this past, well, yesterday. Uh, they left on Tuesday of last week. Um, they saw Wicked, Finding Neverland. Um, they went to the top of the rock, went to Ellis Island. Um, and that's just a few of their highlights. So uh, they got to do a lot of fun stuff out there. Um, Mickey Sloat uh, was named one of the 15 finalists for the um, Herbert Hoover Uncommon Student Award um, for her project Don't Upstage Yourself, uh, which has used theater and the arts to inspire self-confidence in elementary school age students. Um, so it's a very amazing project. And you'll hear so much more about Mickey you already have. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, um, oh yes, our, uh, a few of our um, track events qualified for the state meet uh, this past week. Um, and most notably, Dwayne Sleet placed third in, um, in the state for his 110 meter high hurdles. Um, and lastly, something that's close to my heart. Um, uh, I'm part of an organization called Girls Learn International at Central, and we were planning on having um, a spinoff of The Amazing Race as a fundraiser two weeks ago. It got rained out, so we, are, uh, we have postponed it, and it will be tomorrow. Um, so that's just exciting. Right after finals, there will be pizza, too. It will be cool. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for everything. This has been a really fun experience. And um, yeah, love this. Yes. Um, not too long ago, I was awarded the Doug Walter uh, Scholarship, Memorial Scholarship. And um, it was me and another girl out of five. Um, we uh, were picked out of the five for um, $500 um, scholarship for, uh, I think it was Scott, well, I'm going to Scott College, so I think it was just a Scott college, the college you wanted to go to, but yeah, so that was really cool. We had um, a dinner and everything. It was really awesome. Thank you, students. These reports are always great, so go home, study for finals, and Izzy, get on the apex, okay?
Thank you all for sticking around and giving those last reports. You guys are really great. Thank you very much. And give them a hand. So. All right. Yep. Okay. We'll see you. Take your name plates if you can. And then uh, we'll move on to our regular order of business. Okay. See you, James. Hi, Lisa. Lorraine. All right. We'll move on to board reports. Are there any? Director DeSalvo. Um, first of all, I, my days are running together, but I think it was last week that we um, got to attend the Creative Arts Academy showcase. Um, it was amazing. And I only got to spend a little bit of time there, but those kids were extremely talented. I had never experienced that before, and it was really um, a wonderful, wonderful event. So Dr. Tate, awesome job there. Um, then, um, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, President Johansson and myself, we were sharks uh, last week for a group, mostly there were um, several intermediate kids, but one group from high school where these kids had to create something kind of like you see on Shark Tank and they weren't they I guess kind of trying to sell us on what they had created and what these kids do is is still amazing to me I couldn't even get my iPad thing I was supposed to be watching them on I mean it was it was very amazing to see how smart these kids are how they just took an idea and ran with it and they learned such important lessons about working together working as a team it was very interesting to hear their stories of how they um, overcame hurdles along the way working as a group and as a team to accomplish something so again um, kudos to our kids who are just truly amazing and we were a nice shark even Ralph was a nice shark I will tell you so it was a lot of fun thank you any other reports director Gosa um, so Thursday last week I went to uh, Fillmore which that's the school I always go to um, and my daughter's third grade class, they were uh, doing, they get, they do like six weeks worth of violin lessons and I just took a few pictures. I couldn't get the video to upload. So, um, but yeah, they sat there and then they let us parents sit in there and kind of watch them and what it is. I think it was back in 2008, there was a SCRA grant for like 7,500 bucks to get 32 instruments, the storage racks, the music stands and the instructional books so that some of these kids could get a taste of playing so they might want to go on to fourth grade which my daughter informed me that I am buying her a violin and taking violin lessons so and that's that and then today I was at Fillmore again for field day so uh, it actually is be my son's last year for field day and I've been doing the watchdog program for six years now so I got two more left with my daughter um, and uh, we had they had the tug of wars at the end well then they had all the volunteers go against the staff and they were a little outnumbered there so they did beat us and I told them I was gonna rub that in a little bit shame on them for not letting a board member win if Bill was here I'd tell him to give him some grief for me but that's it for me thanks all right thank you any other reports director Snyder um, I too was at the uh, um, Creative Arts Academy um, gala I guess we will call it at the figgy um, and again we only got to stay for a short time because the board then had a uh, um, a uh, workshop at the Credit Island I guess I'm not even sure what it is now um, to me it's still a golf clubhouse but it hasn't been that for years so um, I was also at Jackson Elementary they had a dedication of their fifth grade uh, art project to the building um, the kindergartners performed um, and that was a, a pretty neat event as well um, I was at a couple other schools um, work-related stuff and it's always fun walking through uh, any of the buildings um, and uh, got a few more to visit in the next couple weeks so. director Klo. so one last report on the uh, creative arts gala 
Um, it was an amazing event. And it was held at the Figgy. I mean, how cool is that? Um, our arts institution and our kids there at the Figgy. Uh, Ron May, one of the uh, instructors that we were able to to take from Illinois, some of the best that Illinois has got to offer. Uh, after the sixth graders got done with their vocal uh, piece, he explained that the reason that the students were moving around is because he doesn't let them stay in, in a soprano or alto section. Those kids have to experience time in each of those sections so that they learn all of those voices. And they were so tight, it was incredible to think that uh, they were not particularly in the area of their comfort zone. Uh, it was just incredible. Um, <clears throat> also went to a showcase of learning on Saturday at the Department of Public Works, City Department of Public Works, uh, a vast arena, a huge place. It's amazing. It's where they park all their garbage trucks and plows and everything, but they opened it up for us to have our middle schoolers present some of their, their uh, presentations of what they've done with science this year. And uh, truly, uh, truly uh, uh, an amazing event. It was that uh, Jim was talking about these uh, judging the kids in their speeches. And, um, and I was going to tell him, you know, that his ability to, at his age, learn from those younger kids is a sign of lifelong learning, which is what we're all about in this district, lifelong learning, even from a middle schooler. If you're a high schooler, I imagine that's a real trial to try to say that you've learned something from middle school students. but. It was a wonderful event, and the last event of Saturday was um, the Creative Arts Academy. Again, they had a, uh, a thank you for the sixth graders. You know, the seventh and eighth graders get lots of uh, attention, but the sixth graders don't get a lot, so Jennifer and Lynn put together, two parents put together a, a thank you for them at Jung Park, and it was, uh, it was a wonderful um, um, throw the water around, everybody gets soaked kind of event on a beautiful day. But um, um, really, truly, I, I just, I, all the things that I'm seeing from the Creative Arts Academy, just sometimes when I'm, I'm down about some of the, the down things that are happening in Davenport District, I look at the Creative Arts Academy as, as a jewel of the way things can be and will be in our district, a district of distinction. So, good report, good things happening. Anybody else? All right. Well, I've got a couple of things. First, uh, we did, well, before I, before I say these things, I want to say that tonight has been a fun night. And to listen to all of you talk about the things that you do besides being here, you go to these other events and you participate with the students, you listen to the students, and I do believe that we have a great board and I think every one of you is great in your individual ways and I think together uh, we are a really, really good board. And, <coughs> and it is some of these things that you all do um, with your passion and interests and everything um, that helps to make this a good board. So I thank you for all of that. I was struck by some of the words earlier from some of the students um, and when they talked about things that happen and, and planning and passion and all of this, but we had um, in our workshop that we had last week, I wanted to thank especially uh, Rich Cluel who did most of the organizational work setting this up um, making sure that we got to certain areas of discussion that we need to. Uh, our board secretary, Mary Crothers, I know that she gets involved in almost everything that we do. And, and none of this would come off the way that it does if <coughs> Mary wasn't right there with us helping to organize and coordinate and plan and think ahead and and she makes a lot of this really look pretty easy. And then uh, Mary Jane Benz, uh, who facilitated our meeting from the IASB, uh, she has been with the IASB for a long time 
and helping school boards across the state uh, with communications issues. And I think she uh, helped us out eight years, ten years ago. I don't remember. And yeah. And some of the belief statements that we have on the uh, in the entrance to the uh, even to this building and other buildings, and all of those statements, um, I believe, came from that uh, meeting that we had several years ago with Mary Jane. So I wanted to thank her along with Rich and Mary. Uh, the Creative Arts Academy. <coughs> it's already been discussed quite a bit, and. I won't say too much about it by itself, uh, but I'll come back and talk about it in a minute. Uh, I did get an opportunity to participate as a shark in the Shark Tank event, and I have to say it was energizing. These students were mostly eighth grade students, and and the it, it, there was so much going on. Uh, some of these students formed teams from different schools and they got together. Some were within a school and they had to determine what kind of a problem are they going to solve and then they had to develop an app to solve that problem. Yeah, it goes on your phone. <laughs> okay. So they yeah, they coded. They figured out what the problem was. They did the coding. They presented it up on the, uh, the, the boards. I mean, it was amazing. And then they'd go, oh, yeah, well, the SQL and the MRP and the ADP and the SR, you know. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, I was. I was worse than you. Um, but it was... Um, Every single one of the groups, I think we graded six groups, and um, every single one of them talked about the communications issues. And one of the groups, when they were asked about the difference, uh, there was obviously uh, a technical part of all of this in doing the coding and getting he here and, and making it work and punching the buttons and all this stuff that happens. Um, and the topics were really amazing. Uh, there was one on banned bullies. Really, really cool. Um, but when asked what was the more difficult challenge, the communications issues between the students or the technical issues, it was an easy answer, the communications issues. And this is eighth grade students recognizing it. Oh, man. But, but beyond that, I wanted to say, I almost couldn't leave that night. Um, there were, this was the first class of this particular class to have been offered in our district. And there will be a DDI two. Uh, we had two students from, that are moving. Uh, one's going to Texas and one is going to Hawaii. And they both uh, put in applications to participate via the internet next year in the next round of this class. Uh, so they're working on that to see if we can do it. Doyle Massey was the teacher. Um, and it was really interesting. He had all this coordinated and he did a great job of, of putting this together. And, and you've got to remember, it, it isn't just a class. Now they've got a Shark Tank event. And they had to coordinate all of that as well. Jennifer Boyd, it sounded like she played a major role in putting all of this together. The curriculum, um, making sure that it all works, it just... I, I was just energized with her enthusiasm, her passion, everything that she did in coordinating all of that. The leader of all of this was Corey Guy. 
And Corey has been working on technology for our district for some time. And this is one of the um, one of the pieces I think that she's putting together to help our whole district. And and when you look at what is technology, and, and there's so much. Part of it's this and this and bandwidth and all of the things that go into it. But I think she's doing just an outstanding uh, job in leading our district in technology. And, and then to come back around uh, to the Creative Arts Academy, the one thing that I... I thought about, well, one of the things I thought about was our superintendent and the leadership that he has shown for the last few years in the District of Distinction activities, in the leadership of what's going on in the district, in the, um, the passion that we all talked about and the students recognized earlier. But I think that that uh, probably he doesn't get enough thank yous and praise and all of that as well as the board members. And, and when I think about the Creative Arts Academy and some of the fantastic words that you all have used to describe that, and when I think about this shark tank and the superintendent is back in the back quietly observing while we're going, yeah, this is so cool, you know, and and um, but but I wanted to thank Doyle and Jennifer and Corey for all of the work that they've done on this. But I wanted to, as well, thank the superintendent for his leadership and direction in helping our district move forward in those areas. That's my report. Any other reports? All right, we'll move on um, to communications. Director Hayes, would you read our upcoming events, please? I'll be happy to. On May 25th, last day of school. May 25th at 7 o'clock p.m., Mid-City Graduation will be held at St. Ambrose Galvin Fine Arts Center. May 30th, Memorial Day holiday, and the ASC will be closed. June 1st will be the policy meeting at ASC Executive Boardroom. Sunday, June 5th, graduation at I Wireless Center, 11 a.m. North, 1.30 p.m. West, 4.30 p.m. Central. Week of June 6th starts the summer hours. All facilities except the operations are closed on Fridays until August 5th. On June 5th, 5.30 p.m., Committee of the Whole will be held in the ASC Jim Hester Boardroom. June 7th at 4 o'clock p.m., Legislative Advocacy advocacy meeting will be held in ASC Executive Board Room. June 13th at 6 p.m. is regular meeting in ASC Jim Hester Board Room. And June 27th at 6 o'clock p.m. a regular meeting also will be held at the ASC in Jim Hester Board Room. Thank you very much. Next is an opportunity for open forum. I don't have any open forum requests. Um, but but open forum really is an important part of our meetings. It was acknowledged by our students earlier this evening, and we really do appreciate members of our community coming and, and talking to us about uh, district issues or concerns. We'll move on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Snyder. I move that the board accept the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Cluel? Yes. Director DeSalvo? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. <coughs> Director Gosa? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of bills? Mr. President. Director Cluel? I move that the board approve the following resolution on the adoption of bills. Resolution is as follows. Resolved that all claims presented to the board having been duly certified as correct by the secretary, reviewed by the administration and board members, and they're hereby audited and allowed as just claims and warrants drawn on the treasury for the several amounts. 
for the resolve the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of May 5th, 2016 through May 18th, 2016 with the following voided checks, that being check number 337598, payable to ACO Unlimited Corporation in the amount of $708.20, that being the wrong amount. Check number 337763, payable to the Office Machine Consultants Incorporated in the amount of $375, that too being the wrong amount. And finally, check number 337810, payable to Scholastic Book Fairs in the amount of $17,088.68. That was a duplicate entry. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. Director Cool. Yes. Director uh, DeSalvo. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Superintendent report. Uh, for my report, I'm going to turn uh, my portion over to Rob Scott and to Mary Ann Corbin to talk about the transition of JB students to other schools. Okay, good evening. Um, Mrs. Corbin's been here for a little bit. I told her to be here at 630. So she's working on some of her flex time for her Italy trip, <laughs> right? Yeah. So. Um, We've had a unique opportunity with JB's situation this year and closing of the school and trying to make sure we meet all the needs of all of the students. And um, I would say that um, one of the things that we've done for next year at both Williams and at SMART, we've hired a student support liaison. That position will be dedicated around those families uh, for those students. They'll probably interact with other students also, but there'll be a direct contact. Uh, for those families and students, and we have already know who those two people are. They've already been hired and assigned to those two positions. Uh, we don't have a posi position for that for at Sedlow. We have fewer kids going to Sedlow. We have the principal going to Sedlow. So uh, if we feel that she can make that contact over there. Um, the transition activities, um, one of the things I want to talk about is there were a lot more elective classes that the students have choices at the other schools. And so that was uh, for the counselors to work and get their schedules built. Um, they also are going to have some jump act activities academy at the very beginning of the year and um, I want to say that I can't think of a better person than Mary Ann to go to lead this. Uh, she has been top notch as far as um, organizing with the students, the staff, all the equipment. Uh, she's been right on top of it. I mean every question that I've had for her she's already been two steps in front of me in organizing a list, meeting with those people so she's just done an awesome job with that. Um, a little bit as far as where our students are, we've got about 40 students from JB that are going to Sudlow. Now they'll see an increase of 100 kids in their school next year, but that's typical, that's an enrollment increase. They're ahead a smaller eighth grade class and have a bigger sixth grade class come in, but they'll have 100 additional kids at Sudlow. We have 100 additional kids that will be at Williams than their enrollment this year, and we've got about 170 going to SMART. So we're seeing big increases at our three schools. And I, I have to give a lot of credit to the principals at each building with the scheduling and even at the high school because we made some reductions at the high school. Principals have been awesome and very creative in looking at their schedules and knowing that um, they've had to meet all of the classes and all the needs of the students. So I just want to give real kudos to every principal and master scheduler at all of our junior highs and high schools. And Marianne, if you could talk a little bit about some of the activities. So I'll start with our elementary, our K-5 students. Both Jefferson and Madison worked with our family involvement liaisons. They also have the uh, liaison at their buildings to invite parents to a parent night. Um, they didn't just invite them with a flyer. They made personal phone calls. They um, addressed individual invitations and delivered them to the building. They provided a meal that night for our families. Um, staff was there to meet and greet with them. They had um, presentations and tours of the building. Um, additionally, today, um, the Madison um, third, fourth, and fifth grade staff, um, they dismissed a little bit earlier, came over for the last half hour and had a kickball game with our students. So um, they, the, the elementary kids have felt very welcomed. Um, our intermediate students, and um, actually we included our eighth graders, on May 18th um, in the morning from 9 to 11, the eighth graders walked to Central, and then we shuttled with school buses to Sudlow, Smart, and Williams, all of the students 
for their attendance area for next year. Those included tours of the building, information. Um, our counselors have actually been working um, diligently to collaborate with um, the other intermediate schools the students will go to, specifically, as Rob said, for the scheduling piece. Our students are very excited, but there is a new experience to have a variety of classes to choose from, so they needed some assistance, and that collaboration has been ha ongoing, um, and they were very excited when they visited the buildings and heard about and saw where some of those classes will take place. Um, both um, elementary and intermediate have provided printed materials that include um, information about what's happening this summer, like the jump program, summer school, unpack your backpack, and um, back to school welcome activities specifically for new families. And we will mail home all of the report cards for those students um, at the end of this um, term, and we will include additional information so those families are informed of those events in the fall. Um, I'd also like to mention that um, Dr. Tate, Rob Scott, Bill Schneiden, Deb Miller, the HR department and DEA worked very closely um, with compassion and um, choice for our staff. Um, they all have new placements. They're going, and um, it, as it worked out, um, many staff members are going to Williams, Sudlow, Smart, Jefferson, and Madison, providing familiar faces for our students um, in the fall. Um, and as Rob mentioned, then I can't say enough about the district and all the departments that have provided support. Um, inventory started in um, at spring break time and just the weight of um, a lot of that inventory and taking care of that for teachers, the curriculum department, the technology department has allowed me and our staff to focus on our students till the very last day. And it also allows the district to utilize those resources right away in the fall. We have great resources at um, JB Young. And um, finally, I'd like to say I've been very honored to be the principal there for the past 11 years. I'm very proud of the skills of our staff and our students, and I'm confident that they'll have a positive impact as they walk the halls of new buildings next year. So thank you. Any other questions, or are we? Well, there may be. Uh, Director Hayes. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. I was, as you know, one of the ones that voted against the closing, very apprehensive about it. But I'm happy to hear your report. It sounds like the transition is going to be smooth. There's been a lot of teamwork together with it. And it sounds like it's working out well. Thank you. Anybody else? Director Gosa. Um, just a quick question. How many people did you hire to help with the transition? And is it just a, like for this year, I mean next year? And we had some uh, funds dedicated for the transition. Okay. And so we've only hired two positions at this current time. Okay. There were two people that were on staff. We felt that those were important positions to get in place right away because of the transition activity to be able to put that person right in front of those students as they were walking. And you could say, oh, that's Mr. Tisson. Okay, and, and the Mr. Combs over here, uh, which would really help them, and of course they know the principal. So we, we felt those were initial. We still have additional dollars to use for other positions. We just haven't decided what to use those for at this current time. But um, how long is their position for? That's part of the, uh, the it was a one year, Dr. Tate, I, if you, it was a one year uh, allotment of dollars, and so we're deciding whether to use those dollars over a two year period or to use them in one year. Okay. And so that's what we're meeting with principals to kind of get their discretion on. I really want to know their voice and what their, their thoughts are on the positions. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Director DeSalvo. It, it is nice to hear. I will concur with Director Hayes that it, it's nice to, to learn the details of the plans. Um, I think we were all very apprehensive and concerned and this was a big change for all of us and so thank you for the time and effort and many many hours that have gone into this and the JB staff was phenomenal Marianne and I give you a credit for that because they were fantastic people there and they will continue to be wherever their new homes are I'm sure of that so thanks for all the time and effort that's gone into this anybody else oh director Mayfield um, I congratulate you on the, the formal, should I say, organization of moving uh, the students to their future schools. But I still have some reserved thoughts about 
those kids that will be moving to these other schools. I know, for instance, that at JB last year we had, I'll say, at least 80 calls from the police there. Now, we need a baseline as we go here to see what happens to these kids in these other schools, to see if, and I really don't know, these other schools as far as their baseline when it comes to this type of behavior, this type of action. But I think we need to look at that to see if we have the same situation as we had at JB or if it was the school or if it was the neighborhood or if it just was the kids or what is it that creates that type of environment that you have to have 82 calls at a at junior high school. We're not looking at that. We're, we're so happy with the fact that we're making this transition mo smooth, but we're not looking at the problems that we had at JV. That are they still going to persist? Is it going to go from one school to three schools or five schools? Or is it going to disappear totally? I don't think if we don't look at the numbers and the stats, if we don't look at the history that we've had and what we're creating for the future, if we don't do any of that, then we can easily fall right back into the same situation of parents not wanting to send their kids to a certain school, which calls low enrollment. And when it causes low enrollment and we have to close the school, then we look at those schools and say, we have low enrollment there. Let's close it. Now, there's reasons why we have low enrollment in some schools, whether it's redistricting that we do or choose not to do, whether it's the environment that's created there, and that environment is not conducive to what parents want for their children. I have not heard that discussed, and I have asked for that information, and I've asked for it to be discussed. I don't know how we can plan for the future of these kids and not know some of the answers to the questions that I just posed to you. It's that essential to their education that we know what creates that type of situation and environment and hopefully be able to create a remedy to solve that type of problem so it doesn't affect other schools in the same way. Yes. All right, thank you. Any other uh, comments for the superintendent's report? Uh, one thing I would suggest, uh, Director Mayfield, is uh, you might want to think about uh, putting in a an agenda request if you want to have a discussion like that at the board table. Well, this wasn't a suggestion. I thought this was just... No, I understand. I'm just saying that if you want, you you suggested in your in your words that it was important to discuss uh, some of these things. I'm just suggesting that if you need to, we've got the board requests there. Just wanted to remind you of that. I think I did request this at an earlier time, but I have not heard anything back from that. Well, we'll we, can, we, can, we, can, yeah, we can debate that right. later. So, okay. okay. Um, is that it for the superintendent report? It is. All right. Thank you very much, Mary Thank Ann. You. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to other items requiring action. I'm going to change the uh, agenda, <coughs> and we're going to address item 10.06, which is approval of textbook adoptions. And we're going to do that first, and then we'll come back to 10.01. Um, 10.06. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Snyder. I move that the board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the textbook adoptions for the following courses, high school and intermediate math, high school German world language, <coughs> eighth grade social studies and high school business law, and new additions for chemistry and health grades six through 12. Thank you, is there a second? Second. 
Is there any discussion? Director Kuhl. I just want to make the comment that, that I hope that next year we come forward with something that is progressive in terms of digital um, textbooks, digital transfer of information. Um, this is a, a really expensive part of our budget and I appreciate how important books and textbooks are. But other districts I know are doing things differently with, with digital information and I really think thinking of the cost cutting that we're making in, in dropping our, our association with the Iowa Association of School Boards, that was only $11,000, but we're looking at every possible way that we can reduce costs. So I, I hope that, that next year there is a concerted effort to bring forward something to the board that shows that we can save money. I believe we can. Um, and I know there's been some discussion around this, some of the supplemental information that comes with the, the, uh, the hardbound textbooks. Uh, and, I, and, and this isn't my field, so I don't mean to chastise, but for years I've been asking that we, we move forward digitally, and I, I would like to see a larger effort. At least explain to me why it is that it doesn't make sense, because I haven't heard that yet. So that's, that's just all I have to say about that. Any other discussion? Uh, Superintendent Tate. Uh, a couple of things. It's not less expensive to digital right now, and that's that's part of the issue. So I don't think we'd want to do this to save money. We want to do it to be on the leading edge. And something we didn't explain very well, and I have a group putting together a report, um, there's a lot of digital in what you're approving right now and what you're paying for. Again, we just didn't lay it out right. So I've got a group of very smart people showing here's the digital we're already getting and a comparison of what it costs and, and what the future might look like. So. I'm with you. We don't want to have this discussion like this again at the board table. Thank I you. want to I give you the answers. I appreciate that. Any other discussion? Alyssa, would you mind if I ask you a couple questions? I would be happy to answer your questions. Because you love math, right? Yes. And you probably think about math every single day. Yes. I'm actually back there reading in between your conversations a book about mathematical mindset and a, having a mathematical growth mindset. Say that last part again, a mathematical well, have what? Well, have you heard of Carol Dweck and the having a growth mindset? No. Well, <laughs> for, sorry, I'm off on a tangent. Fixed versus growth. So a fixed mindset is I, I'm, I'm where I am. That's who I am. A growth is I'm willing to grow and learn and so a book came out about a mathematical mindset and how in our nation I mean how many times do you hear parents say oh, I'm, I'm not good at math and and even elementary teachers are often teachers of reading and not of math and so one of my <laughs> passions is even changing the mindset of Davenport teachers and community that's how much I love math so I'm with you I believe that everything in the universe can be expressed with an equation. And I do. <laughs> this is a good board. Hey. Um, so where I'm, I, I had uh, a parent earlier tonight talking to me about math and the difficulty of math and you and I have talked a little bit about common core um, the math mindset that you're describing I think is fascinating which my guess is that it's quite a bit different from common core thinking would you would you say that um, no I would say it's it's the same it, it's having they're a little different, but they're more alike than not. Having that growth mindset starts with the brain, and the chapter I just read would be, let's say you have a problem here and a problem here, and you got this, this problem right and this problem wrong. Your brain didn't grow at all when you got the problem right. But by making the mistake, your brain is growing and learning. 
and that's more of an effect in mathematical growth than getting 100% on a math prop up test and not growing from it. So Common Core would actually, one of the mathematical practices is um, m making mistakes and learning yeah. from them. But then the, the way that we measure that has to be quite a bit different and that sounds like an area that we have had difficulty with mm -hmm. in the whole state and where are we in that area if we're if we're going to make these math uh, adoptions uh, and I'm guessing that they're aligned with the common core yes. uh, but what about our measuring tools are they aligned with our curriculum and are they aligned with the common core and uh, are they aligned with what you just said which would seem to be more measuring how many mistakes you had than how many answers you got right so um, in terms of the Iowa assessments, if that's one of the questions that you're asking on measurements, the Iowa assessments are currently not aligned to the Common Core. Um, if we get if go towards the Smarter Balanced, they would be aligned. Um, in terms of district assessment measurements, there, keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, those um, from the work in my department, all of our curricular areas, we are working towards the standards-based assessments and reporting, and that starts with, um, you know, prioritizing standards and working towards making common assessments, formative and summative, that reflect the conversation we're having right now. So, so district-wide, you believe we'll be okay in our assessments, even if the state isn't. Is that right? I do. Um, uh, bringing in Corey Guy into our department has really made us grow, and she has led us tremendously to do make decisions not because of what we think is right, what we think is our opinion, but what does the re research say, and um, what you know what's statistically proven, and then we move forward in that direction. Okay, I, I want to say I have complete confidence in you and in all of you and the work that you do I've I've spent some time um, with you talking I think last year I spent a while trying to understand it a little bit more uh, because I have to go out and talk about this and I still only know about that much of what you just said but but I'm going to use what you said uh, quite a bit I think <laughs> as I talk about that I really want our kids to make mistakes. And, um, but I, nah, I'm gonna leave, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, but anyway, I do have complete confidence in what you're doing, and I hope none of my questions are interpreted as uh, lack of confidence. I, I just may not agree with everything all the time, but, uh, but I support you. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, we'll take the vote. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Cluel. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all for, uh, for staying this late through the meeting. I love the smile. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll move on, we'll move back to uh, 10.01, which is the approval of data warehouse agreement. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Cluel. I move that the board approve the administration's recommendation regarding the FERPA protections data sharing agreement between St. Ambrose University and eight school districts, including the Davenport Community School District. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Cool. I had a, a couple of questions um, about this. Um, it was variously stated that this is a, a mechanism for aggregation of data, um, the opportunity for districts to pull this data, but only their data 
and nobody else's. Um, will there be cross-referencing of data? Will there be comparisons made between districts? There will not. Never? Never. How will we use it? We won't use it. I mean, because we already know our own data, so. So who is the beneficiary? Well, it's the Achieve Quad Cities was the group four years ago, five years ago, they put together the idea of a data warehouse, but now that's United Way, so they will use it to show the Quad Cities, all eight districts, how are we doing with graduation rates? How are we doing with, um, with our um, state assessments? How are we doing with um, achieving in the high schools, in other words, keeping up with um, the courses they're supposed to have? How will we, all eight of us, do with early childhood being ready to go into kindergarten? How will we do with absenteeism? So it's, it's a one conglomerate, and the idea is that groups will use it to sell the program, to sell the need for education. So it really is now United Way and the Education Council of the United Way will use it in totality. So would we have any opportunity to say we'd like uh, information aggregated in this particular way to give us information, give us feedback in terms of our educational programs? Well, we already have that. We're, we're they're actually accessing the, our database, so it's nothing that you don't already have. So we really wouldn't need to do that. Okay. There was, um, there was, I don't, I forget which of the attachments it said that um, districts would be able to use this information to help them determine what kinds of social services would should be placed in our schools. Can you explain how that would work? Um, the, the reason that they have this new agreement is because now they have partners. For example, Deer is a partner. The Boys and Girls Club may be a partner. The YMCA may be a partner. They would be asking the question, how are they affecting and if they're affecting education in a positive way? We certainly can use that once they ask the question. Um, but that's, that's now the use and why we have a secondary agreement because those partners need to understand there are restrictions on how the data may be used and how it may be accessed. Okay. But Chief Quad Cities, weren't they responsible for the 40 assets? I, I'm not recognizing I believe they assets. were. This was about seven or eight years ago. Um, Okay. And well, there is no Achieve Quad Cities any longer. It's it really moved forward. It's taken into the Education Council. Which is part of United Way. Right. You're on that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I, uh, I just want to make sure Superintendent Tate, um, is this a is it a good thing to do? Does it help our district? I mean, when you look at the document and, and it says here are the uh, benefits to the districts, um, but when you indicate that it's really just uh, a compilation of our data with other districts' data and then somebody else is interpreting it, um, is it, is it a good thing? It is because th what United Way wants to do is to be able to actually um, find resources in the entire Quad Cities area for graduation, for example. And so they would use our graduation rates um, to show that there is a need. Early childhood readiness is another one, readiness for kindergarten. They would use that to actually solicit resources from the Quad Cities area, which we will then be a beneficiary of. Are there, in reading through this, um, and it looks like a, a fairly strict agreement, um, how much additional um, burden will it put on the resources that you have in the administration? It doesn't at all. The original agreement is the one that you signed a year and a half ago, and that's the one that talks about that they have access to our database. And uh, there were a few years when a lot of work was done, and uh, Rachel Steiner worked very hard, and especially Don Anderson Rasher, 
to make sure that in fact it wasn't going to be a strain on our um, employees but it it's a matter of now it's pretty flawless they they access our database and we don't have to spend a lot of man hours working with it okay great thank you oh. thank you any other discussion Director Cool. Just one one good thing that I saw in the agreement um, is that they're going to do post secondary follow up, at least for two years out of high school, which I think is is something that could be very valuable to us to see um, um, well to, to reach out beyond you know our twelfth grade uh, abilities to see if what we've done in our thirteen years is producing good results so I, I think that follow up I, I hope there's something in there that we would be able to access because uh, I could see that that might be very valuable to us well, we already do have that access so they are really just accessing what we already have and again but we we do that follow up and um, um, probably we owe your report from time to time on it, but it's something we've been following. How how many years do we follow up? I'm guessing we've always done it. Um, and, and again, I don't know if you've ever had a report on it or not, but it's really just become a thing where people are getting very, very interested. Mm, in. Well, good. Any additional discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Director Cluel. Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director DeSalvo? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of administrative pay raises? Mr. President? Director DeSalvo? I move that the board approve what the superintendent recommends <laughs> for the compensation package totaling 2.38% for administrative employees for the 2016-17 and the compensation package totaling 2.28% for the 2017-18 school year as previously discussed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Gosa. This is going to be a Marsha question. Um, for the 2017-2018 school year, what What's the dollar amount total? It'd be two hundred and seven thousand dollars more. Okay. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Okay. Call for the vote. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. Director Cluel? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of transportation services contract? Mr. President? Director Hayes? I move the board approve the early childhood and special education transportation service to the lowest responsible and responsive bid of $369,884 per year to Riverbend Transit. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Gosa. Um, for now, why don't you direct your questions to the superintendent? Um, I just had a question about what the rubric scoring was based on. Okay, that would be a Mr. Maloney question. I think I said that right. The scoring rubric had uh, several categories of responsiveness to uh, the service provision requirements in the RFP around the equipment that was offered, the maintenance program, the training of the drivers, uh, uh, those kinds of categories. Each category had a number of subcomponents. Each evaluator was able to give a total uh, number of points for each of those categories to each of the subcomponents. 
uh, coming up with a total score. Uh, and this was the same uh, rubric that had been used uh, in the past for this particular uh, contract. Then uh, the uh, points for uh, the cost were an all or nothing award, so the low bidder got all of the points for that category. Can I ask something? Um, Durham does all the rest of our busing, is that correct? They do. I'm just, because there's like a $50,000 difference in the bids. I was just kind of curious how two busing companies have that much difference. That's the numbers that they provided. So that's uh, the difference. Now, the total contract there was uh, uh, 369, so Durham was a little over 400. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the range of variation that the two bidders offered. I'm good for a minute. I'm Director DeSelmo. I apologize if I missed it. How long is this contract for? One year with two one-year uh, option renewals. Renewal. Okay. Thank you. Additional discussion. So I was kind of wondering about that term also. So the renewals and the way that it's worded here is the bid of 369,884 per year to Riverbend Transit. So so those those additional years I'm I'm assuming are at the same rate. And then when do you make the decision on that? I mean, if, and, and how do you do it? Do you evaluate them? Do you, how do you make that decision on whether you want to continue or get a different bid? Well, it's uh, an evaluation of service. There are some performance indicators, uh, some uh, performance requirements in the contract. And annually you will look at, uh, at has the service provi provision met the performance requirements and at things like on time at bus stops, uh, uh, the just the, the total of all of the categories in the rubric uh, would be evaluated. Did they uh, maintain the bus maintenance program? Did they maintain the training uh, and qualifications of the drivers that were required uh, in the uh, request for proposal requirements? It's uh, exactly the same uh, for the larger transportation contract where they have performance indicators. It's a three-year, uh, it's a one-year with two one-year options. Right, okay. And three years is the maximum that we're able to, to, to go. Let me ask you, are fuel costs included in this or not? Fuel costs are included in this pricing. Okay, and so they've got, a depot or something I mean how does that where do they where do they locate their buses then Riverbend right I do not know where their service yard is I don't maybe um yeah but you need to come up here yes, we are well you need to talk in the microphone Shirley Childers. I'm the finance and HR director and contract management for Riverbend Transit. I apologize, Randy Zobris. Zobris is our executive director, but he happens to be out of town on business this week, so I am, <laughs> I am the person. Um, and public speaking also is my, not my forte, but I'll do my best here. We actually are out by the U, uh, by UPS. We are a public transportation district, so we have currently have 64 vehicles. We just got seven new vehicles, and so we have six on order. Um, we fuel at the Davenport Fueling Station. We have a contract with the city of Davenport for fueling. And yes, fueling cost is included in our, in our cost proposal. Okay. And, and this, this particular service is a tough service, right, Mr. Maloney? I mean, you have certain requirements on this that are way different from our general ed uh, student bus requirement yes 
Okay. Y yes, and uh, Tammy Callenrad, who's the principal for early education, uh -huh. is uh, a part of uh, setting up the requirements and is the one who's most able to speak to what those demands are. I guess uh, part of what's going through my head, I'm trying to figure out some of this. Does this end up, uh, do we get somehow, does this go through our general budget or does this, do we go back to the SBRC later and ask for additional funding? P how does this part work? Um, for the cost of the transportation services, I believe special education is funding part of it and then general education picks up the other part because I don't believe Tammy that the four year that we can provide or pay for transportation with four year old dollars anymore right in the past we've been able to use the preschool funding for some of the transportation costs but that has since been stricken in so we can no longer do that so it's just gonna be general fund and special education funds that will pay for it so a big a big chunk of that then will be uh, from the general fund right correct and uh, and what do we say it's it's not quite four hundred thousand and I'm just going to assume that a majority of it is from the general fund Currently what we're doing for this school year is utilizing, we will be utilizing tuition that we've collected at the Children's Villages to pay for that, to offset it. Hmm. Because, you know, I mean, transportation <coughs> costs throughout the state are kind of goofed up anyway, and I'm trying to think through how this affects our, I in fact, part of this then affects our average transportation cost per student even though it's part of this and even though you might be using some uh, children's village money it becomes from the general budget then you could wrap some of this up into our our transportation cost which you probably don't do right now I would think I guess I'm not clear what you mean by r wrap it up in oh, our transportation Right, costs. what I mean is I'm not sure what our transportation cost is per student, but if it's $350, because that's a number that you have, I'm saying that part of this cost ends up b adding on to the average cost of transportation per student because we're using uh, general budget dollars. When we typically report average costs for transportation to the state, it doesn't include pre-K. It's K-12. So from that reference point, no, it wouldn't impact it. And I don't think it would be any different than what we're doing this year. I mean, there's not going to be another financial burden on the district because of this contract. We're currently in a contract. We're just, we bid for the services. Right. No, I, I'm not questioning okay. that. I, I just think there's got to be a way for us to get some money from the state for it is all I'm tr <laughs> trying to do. I'm trying. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, Director Gosa. I just had one other question. I was noticing as I was looking through here, our director of special education did not, wasn't involved in the scoring of the rubric. Is that because she can't or... That's because she happened to have a conflict come up in her schedule on the final day that we were scoring. Uh, she was with us throughout the process of evaluating the proposals. And, and on the last day, when we met to actually score the ru rubric in, together, uh, she was uh, called away with a conflicting meeting and was unable to attend. It's disappointing. Any other discussion? All right, thank you. We'll call for the vote. Director Hayes. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Kluhl. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Gosa. No. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Move on to a approval of change order for Central. May have motion. Mr. President, 
Director Quill. I move that the board approve the change order number two to Cedar Valley Steel in the amount of $71,088.22 for the central pool and auditorium project. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Snyder. I'm just curious as far as these changes, what, uh, I guess, what sparked these changes? These are an accumulation of 21 different items that are a result of found conditions, a result of some changes in uh, certain duct work and so forth in the auditorium, uh, and uh, a result of things that happened during what we call the steel detailing process. The structural engineer's drawings are line drawings only and the connections of different members together and so forth occur uh, in the process of shop drawings done by the steel fabricator. And that's where uh, some of the uh, conflicts or unknown pieces uh, come together. So there were 21 different items uh, that were included in this. The change order requests originally totaled about $88,000. We uh, were able to deny uh, or beat back uh, about 17,000 of them, getting the total down to the $71,086. That's about 3% of the steel fabrication and erection contract, which is uh, 1.65 million. Any other discussion? Director Hayes. I guess I'm con um, kind of puzzled with the pool framing. Isn't that something that would be determined during the initial specs? What would create a change in that? The All of the structural steel um, for all of the building uh, is designed by the structural engineer. Uh, and places where, for instance, uh, structural steel marries up to masonry walls are the kinds of things where the exact uh, drawing of how that happens is done by the steel fabricator after bidding. It's not drawn by the engineer uh, so that in combination with some found conditions in the existing building where <coughs> the new is attaching to existing uh, and some conflicts in drawings perhaps between uh, the masonry wall and the steel uh, drawings uh, all add together to create a number of uh, costs and changes that weren't reflected uh, clearly or clearly enough in the uh, drawings that were bid, uh, leaving the steel fabricator and erector to have a claim for additional costs. Thank you. Director DeSalvo. I'll ask again, as I always do when we have these changes, that where, where are we at in, in whole? I know we have this, I'll call it a rainy day fund set aside for situations like this, but where are we falling? Yes, and where we are right now today is there between change orders approved and change order requests pending, we are at uh, just uh, a few just a bit over our current construction contingency. Mm -hmm. We have taken steps uh, in the last uh, week to increase the construction contingency, the, that's budget work in process, uh, but the current claims pending equal all of the current construction contingency. Um, some of those will be denied, some of those will be negotiated down, um, but right now we're very close to um, having used all of the construction contingency currently available. Uh, that total construction and contingency on the project uh, was originally, uh, well, it was originally quite small, but then we increased it uh, a little over a year ago mm -hmm. uh, to a total of $812,000 approximately, and uh, that representing about 3% of the total budget. Thank you. Director Gosa. I was going to answer Director Hayes' question really simply. It's really easy to make a drawing sit behind a desk and never being out in the field somewhere. 
when you get out in the field is when you find out how you got to make stuff work. That's why you run into that stuff. I just kind of wanted to Julie it down for you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Okay, very good. We'll call for the vote. Uh, Director Cluel. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We've already done 10.06. We'll move. Whoa. I'm sorry. Yeah, 10.05. May I have a motion uh, regarding approval of juvenile court liaison contract? Mr. President. Director Snyder. I move that the board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the extension of the juvenile court liaison contract from 7116 through 63017 in the amount of $173,230. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Director Gosa. How many people does this cover? Um, I should have provided a lot more detail on this. So I'd like Rob uh, mention which schools they are at, and then Marsh, if you talk about how we actually split the cost for it. Um, sure. Uh, we have uh, seven. We have two in our middle schools. Uh, we have our four high schools and then Keystone. Um, and those are funded pretty much 50-50% with the city. And um, they, they are vital uh, with our relationship back and forth with the city. They also um, are involved in our diversion classes that we, um, as they presented to you in the past, um, uh, with the city diversion program. Um, so they've got a roster. Uh, the two middle school representatives are also responsible for other schools um, and travel there when needed. Thank you, Did Mr. You Scott. Director Mayfield. Uh, yes, is there an actual breakdown of not necessarily uh, names, but at least numbers that are being serviced at each school? And that's basically the information that we'd like to coordinate with the amount of money that's being spent. We're talking about students that are being serviced as well as uh, how many people are being paid by this, which you mentioned, but it'd be nice to have it in an email or a letter or something of some sort. Yeah, I would say at the high school, uh, I want to say on an average there between the 20 and 30 students are being um, serviced by the high school representatives and probably if you have a few more than that um, at our Keystone facility. Um, but we could, we could get those numbers for you so you would know where they lay out. We, of course, we have less at the middle school level. Uh, being that they're spread out through the six buildings that we currently have. But we can provide that. Thank you, if you would. Any, any other discussion? Director Gosa. Um, I, I just have one other question. On You said that this is split with the city, because I remember a while back when they were talking about their proposed department budget cuts, I thought that the juvenile liaison was one of the positions that they were talking about um, yeah I think three to four years ago we did pick up an additional cost uh, for benefits for them uh, three to four years ago I remember that coming through also no, I think this was they actually supported us with an additional position uh, two years ago okay um, so when we opened the Keystone facility and so we haven't I I've not heard that from Scott Hobart about uh, cutting those positions okay not I at the school level not at the school level okay. I should say because I thought that was in their proposed budget for this year. Yeah, not okay. to, uh, he's not contacted myself about that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I've got a couple of questions. Um, I just did a real quick number crunch, and it looks like we're probably spending about 3000 bucks per student. Does that sound about right? Just guessing. I, I've got to say something. It's not just the students that are assigned to them from the juvenile court system. Gene Chisholm services every student at Wood. I mean, they, they're not just re restricted to the ones that are assigned to them. He is an asset 
to the principal. In fact, any time we try to change them away, she'll fight tooth and nail. So we can't look at it like, oh, they're, they're only assigned four or five students. No, they're an asset to the entire, entire school. They're part of the diversion program at Wood, for example. In other words, they will take people in and, and actually work with the students. So uh, probably I need to get you a detailed indication of exactly what they are doing for our schools because I don't want you to think all they're doing is servicing someone from the court system. That's not true. The, um, the 173,000 appears from the, the information that we have because it says that this is due to a change in the cost is the way I interpret it. Was there a, is, is it just a change in the cost or a change in the term? So um, was it some other number besides the 173,230? I, I didn't realize there was a change in the term. It was just the increase. Uh, and that's why I'm asking, experience what, was, what the was the increase? We just have increase. a number. I, I don't have that right off the top. I think it was just the increase of their yearly increase. So. Because they have also set on, um, you know, year by year base matrix or whatever that they increase upon. So I think that's what it was. I don't have that in front of me. I, I, sorry. I understand, but it could be that their matrix is, say, a 10% increase or something like that. No, I'm just saying without knowing what it is that if what – I'm sorry? They're on our matrix. How is that – they're on our matrix, then we wouldn't have a contract like this with them. I, I don't understand. We have a matrix for for – I'm going to refer to Deb Miller for a second because I don't want to misspeak in the situation. Okay. I I apologize if I'm being contrary tonight. I don't mean no, to. No, it's be good information. I d the juvenile court liaisons are currently on the old step matrix, and I don't have with me the number or the increase for each step, but they're they're at various levels depending on when they were hired so um it's probably marcia i don't know if you have that with you if it's an eight step eight step uh lane that they're in or not so we can get that information for you i just don't have it with me tonight deb is that on it's on this district matrix so we we established yes, the pay rates, yes. not they're, the city they're consider our employees that's what I was saying. yeah yeah that's and what they i was get saying the same benefits that our other non-bargaining people get there they fall into the non-bargaining group Yes. So it's not the city determine the raise if that's what I thought that was your question. Well, and that's kind of where I'm going because I, I still don't understand quite the mix. The city is still paying for part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And in fact, there are three organizations that are paying for these people. And I think we take the lion's share of the payments is the way I understand it. From the, the third present. Entity. Do you know the third? I, I'm not referencing the third entity that's paying. Oh, I thought it was listed here. Um, let me go back up here. Oh, it's the between the juvenile court services for the seventh judicial district, the Iowa Department of Human Services, and the Davenport Community School District. Okay, I see. I I see that as one revenue. Yes. So three. I was seeing that the two of them are one revenue. They're paying half of, and we pay the other half. It's, I see, it was two line items out of the city, yes. I was, okay. I reference them as one, the city pays half, we pay half, and we pick up the benefits. All right. And the agreement is for another, it looks like it's a four-year agreement. Is that right? Yeah. That we currently have, and this is really just a change in the dollar amount. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, if you can get that information sometime, uh, it's not very urgent. It won't affect my vote tonight, but I'd be curious about so it. Can you? Can I just ask for a quick clarification on the information? I, we know we want the amount of students being served, and then you want to know exactly what the percent of raise 
Yeah, yeah, I guess percent, and, and I'm a little bit, um, it's interesting because it sounds like this is the one group out of everybody that won't be on our matrix. Is that right? No, they are on a matrix. It's just that we have several matrixes out there now. I know, uh, but we're. Z's, I should say. But we're going to be down to about two here in a few weeks, right? I mean, mm. with respect to uh, non-bargaining and uh, because that's coming up. You mean in terms of voting for the packages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ju it's just the non-bargaining that's left. Right, mm -hmm. and and that's all I'm saying is that it feels to me like they're in some other area that uh, isn't controlled by the board in terms of the matrix it that they're on. It's controlled by the board. It, it, it they're in the group that is the non-bargaining. Within the non-bargaining group, there's a couple of different ma matrices that we have been using, um, the old step matrices, and then the one that the that we've put um, some of the technical people on, which is a newer version mm -hmm. of a okay. matrix. But th but they are figured, and Marcia can speak to this, but they're calculated all as one group in terms of the total package, and the dollars are spread over everybody in that group and and I understand it's just that if it's a different matrix than the one that we know about because the like the technical one and where you have the responsibility and and mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff that goes into the development it sounds like you're saying this is just an old matrix and they will not be part of the new matrix is that right that's currently right hmm. And we can share that with you when we do the exempt session right. before the next board meeting, I think, okay. it's scheduled. Okay, great. Any other discussion? Director Gosa. Um, since President Johansson was kind of talking about it, are they considered district employees or city employees? District employees. Okay. So, so then I have to ask, what about benefits then? It, Huh? So, so all the benefits, which is a significant portion of the compensation, comes from the district then. And yes, is that something that we originally agreed to with the city and with the seventh judicial court or whatever it is? I mean, is that that's just understood that that those benefits are just part of our responsibility and I can't speak to the original because it was before my time it was mm -hmm. way past four years ago four and a half mm -hmm. years ago so I don't know if Marcia can off the top of her head that's something we could research and provide information f about I I would just be interested uh, you know it's kind of like these that 25 year agreement that we have and sometimes you think, wow, what happened back there 25 years ago? Should we continue that contract? And I, I don't know whether it's right or wrong for us to take 50% plus, say, 40%. I don't know what our benefits are um, in terms of a percent, but that would put us way over 50% of the cost. So it's just consideration. Uh, Director Mayfield. Well, I, I think you almost hit on it there. I'm not quite sure. I thought the total cost was benefits were a part of it, and then the percentages came. So what you're saying is, <coughs> for what I'm hearing, if it's correct, that the benefits come after the other costs are shared, and those benefits are paid by the district, totally. Yes, that's correct, Marcia. Yes. We've got they pay half their salary benefits we are responsible for that is there a s oh director gosa are the benefits included in the price that we're going to vote on yes okay The the way that it's listed, it says contract payments. So where where do those payments go? I mean, it's it's kind of odd to talk about payments when well, 
one second. I want to see exactly, I believe you're looking at the contract that we have with them for theirs. I, the way I read this, Mr. President, <laughs> is this is what they're funding us. This is their part of it. You're is saying that, the 173000 is what they're paying us? Yes, we're going to be compensated that amount. That's the way I read it. Yeah. Mr. President. Uh, Superintendent Tate. Would you uh, table this until we can get all these answers and bring it back to you next time? Well, that was going to be my question, is if there's a sense of urgency to getting this done. Okay, yeah, if there's... Um, if there's no particular sense of urgency, I'd entertain a motion um, from there is, and what is the urgency? Um, they are waiting on us to approve this because they are trying to finalize their budget so they can submit it. And so approving it at this meeting was kind of stretching their timeline. So I think that if we put it off another couple of weeks, it may... Um, I don't know. There, I, I know it is very uh, time sensitive for them that we get this approved so that they can um, move forward with their budgeting. When you say them, who is them? Um, we're working with the um, judicial district. The, it would be the juvenile court services because we work with them every year to put together. They ask us for information so that they can put together their budget. Director Gosa. I'm so lost right now. Um, you said the amount was what they were paying us, not what we're paying them. I'd like to say at this point, when this was on the agenda, I was prepared to talk about the services and what we provide for students and what their role is, um, the financial part of the requirement. I would need to dig into it deeper. And I'm quite honestly, I'm not going to be on record to state anything at this point um, because I came here ready to provide services and the opportunities and what they're doing for our district and what those those JCL provide to our students and faculties. Okay. Well, we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Uh, Superintendent Tate. Um. Their problems notwithstanding, I, I do not feel comfortable recommending approval tonight. We're just going, and if, if they're in that much of a stretch, then I could call a special meeting. But again, I, I just do not feel comfortable as a leader saying I recommend approval tonight. All right, so uh, the motion is still on the table um, to approve the extension of the juvenile court liaison contract uh, in the amount of 173,230. Um, in, in a moment, I'll call for the vote unless there's a motion to postpone. Um, I think the best motion at this point would be to postpone indefinitely and then that can be let me see here excuse me yeah that's what I'm going to look here um, so <coughs> so the postpone indefinitely 
is a motion that the assembly declines to take a position on the main question. Its adoption kills the main motion for the duration of the session and avoids a direct vote on the question. Um, if, if we postpone to a certain time, uh, then we would select a time. And we may, for instance, uh, call a special meeting in a couple of days if there's a sense of urgency that this really needs to get done and we can clarify some of the um, issues that have been brought up. Otherwise, if there is no motion, I will be calling for yeah, the yeah. vote. May I make a motion? Director Kluhl. I move that the board postpone indefinitely the motion on the table until such time as administration is able to provide the information requested this evening. Is there a second? Second. This is, um, it is debatable. Is there any discussion? It's been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely. Is there any discussion? All right, I'll call. F so the vote is only on the motion to postpone and a yes vote would mean that you favor postponing and a no vote means that you do not favor postponing. If the motion passes, then this motion will be postponed, and if it fails, we'll go back to the main motion. Um, is that clear? Okay. I'll call for the vote on the motion to postpone. Director Kluhl? Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director DeSalvo? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries, and this motion is postponed indefinitely. Thank you very much. Um, now, we'll move on to discussion item. Um, <coughs> the one discussion item that we have is a follow-up on the board's self-evaluation. And... This is uh, something that, fortunately for us, I believe it was Director Hayes that asked about it, and this happened just recently. And, and Director Hayes, could you reframe your original question, and then we'll go into the discussion. Yes, we, last year, last March, we went to a self-evaluation, and we, had some points that um, Margaret Buckton gave to us and of those points we didn't finish the discussion on them we only went through maybe three or four of them and there were some others that were left that we didn't have the opportunity to discuss so thank you for bringing that to our attention there were a number of things that were happening right then and uh, director Hayes is right we got part way through it and did not complete uh, our work in reviewing those items that were discussed at, um, at that self-evaluation. And <coughs> I think it was um, Margaret Buckton that was leading that. I think that during this discussion, I don't know that we need to discuss specific parts of this, or we could discuss all of it, or we can discuss how are we going to use this information in the future? It's, uh, my goodness, it's almost, it's going on 10. So, so I would open it up for discussion. What do you want to do with the information that we had from that self-evaluation? Director Hayes. After reading through it, and the newer members have had the opportunity to read through it as well, I guess unless they had any questions about it, I would be comfortable unless they had something different to add to it or questions about it. So what, what do you mean by that? Well, everything is here. Our minutes from the last meetings were here. The new members have had the opportunity to read it. We were actually in the session to discuss it at that point in time. And if 
the new members are comfortable not finishing it, then that's fine since they weren't a part of it anyway. But I just kind of wanted the refresher to put closure to it since we never finished it. All right. Is there more discussion? Director DeSalvo. It, it seems like from reading that most of this we have done, but being new and not having been in that discussion last March, it is kind of a disadvantage to the newer people to understand what took place. I mean, yeah, we read the minutes, but it's just it's not the same. I, I think it's a good exercise, and do we do it again? Or I don't know. Director Cluel. Yeah. I think it would be a good topic for a committee of the whole discussion to bring everybody up to speed. So when you say it would be a good topic, are you talking about the whole issue of the self-evaluation? Yeah, I, I think to go over these seven points, you know, that Margaret left us with and look at what we have done. Uh, we have our belief statements here in front of us. Uh, I think to talk about our belief statements, are they okay? Do they need to be revised? I think just a general discussion to bring all board members up to the same speed with where Margaret left us. And, and Director Hayes is, is right. We dropped the ball on this and we need to continue to keep our eyes on, on this because it's good information. There are actually nine items. There are two more on the next page. But you're, I'm assuming that you would include those. As no, I, I'm serious. Uh, well, of course. I, 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 is, there, is there a reason? Well, you're presuming that perhaps those eight and nine were low on the priority and that I don't think that we should have included them. So it's a well, reasonable well, yeah, question. Yeah, when you it's said, a reasonable question. When you said I would seven. rephrase that to say all nine okay, items great. that Margaret Buckton left us with. Okay. Sorry, and we're having a little thing here. Any other discussion? We've got uh, new board members. You want to weigh in here or just let it go? We've only had a couple of people weigh in suggesting right now it looks like this would go back to the agenda committee and they would make a decision on when to um, probably discuss this finish, well finish or start continuing. Uh, the discussion. Some of these could be lengthy discussions in themselves. Any other uh, discussion? All right. Then <coughs> this will go to the agenda committee for uh, consideration of further discussion. Are there any administrative reports? None. Okay. I've got one board request. Uh, this is from Director DeSalvo. It's an information request. Are there construction plans for other schools, specifically the high schools? Um, much money and time is going to Central. Are we being fair considering equal improvements in other facilities? Um, very interesting request and, and uh, I'm sure that there will be information forthcoming. Uh, an uh, agenda item requested from Director Mayfield, a report on JB's 80 plus police calls in the year 2014-15 and an update on the present year, 15 and 16. Discussion on the behavior of the students and after school playground activities, fighting and bullying, police calls to the playground the surrounding area because of the large gathering of kids, 40 or 50 unsupervised. And then additionally, uh, there's an information request on how much special ed education funds do we receive each year? What are the different categories, state and federal? Thank you very much. Um, looks like it. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.